No, it's. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kickback back Podcast. Kicking kick off, you did, he did. Right. Kick kick off. off season four. I'm Gerard Jane here, man. My boy is First in the building. This is not the kickoff. You missed the kickoff. I did not say it's the kickoff of I season four. I feel like four. you did. You you need Q-tips. Is what you need to do. So we, they, yeah, you need Q-tips. You get all, me get, all, get all off in there and get you know what I'm saying. Get that. Anyway. The person who's being rude and interrupting the hell of what stuff I'm saying is two-time Grammy nominee, my big brother for life, Case. It's actually his show, happy so birthday, he feels like yo. you can do this. Right. For sure. Who? Happy birthday, you, you, nigga. Birthday. Happy birthday. This nigga said for who? Sure. Right. You, you know what? nigga. <laughs> he, don't even remember, he don't even remember. Appreciate you. <laughs> How you also, open this shit? Birthday is it, nigga? <laughs> How you open this shit? <laughs> you pinch the side and you pull the thing on. Uh, also, right in front really? of me, my brother. Really? <laughs> My brother, super funny man, Cole Parker, is in the building with What's us. What's going on, fam? I'm always happy to be here. Love when Cole comes through, man. We always need the energy you bring here. It's always a good fucking time, man. So he didn't bring man, Big um, Shirley tonight. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so, in case you have been with us over the past couple of seasons, so one of you know that uh, you we, we do a lot case. during this podcast. You know what I'm saying? We talk about whatever's happening. We have no holds barred. We just go in, have a good time doing it. We feel like things that are going on in society, we need to kind of take a break from for a couple hours. You know what I'm saying? On a Wednesday night at 9 p.m. So that's what we do. So we are having a special guest come in tonight. We'll talk about him in a second, but I think it's fitting for our guest that we have this discussion today about celebrating 50 years of hip hop, man. That's it, man. Let's go. That's all, just dope. all day, that's what we talk about. 50 years of hip hop. Everybody in this room has been influenced greatly and has had influence on the culture of hip hop. And when our guest comes in, he'll be a person that we can really talk to. And he and damn sure things. had influence. Damn yeah. sure had influence. That nigga is hip hop. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Had a dance <laughs> named after him for years that we yeah. all did. He, he brought hip hop to the masses. Yes, he did. Real talk. Yeah, and yeah, he, was, no he, was the, he was the yeah. It was it was him and his partner. We're not they gonna did. say that. They brought hip hop to the to they the to middle America. They did. And we're gonna talk about that. And we're gonna talk about Spanish for white people. Right. Say it again. That, what's that's that's Spanish for white people. Middle America, Middle Spanish, America. Yeah. Clears. Yeah, that's Spanish. That's Spanish for white people. He's the cold. Clears. Yeah. What's up, white people? It's so, cool. I fuck with y'all. No, we, for sure. I'm glad to be back. Man, how y'all brothers been, man? What's been going on? I, I mean, I know how you been. So, but the people, you don't know me like that. Okay. It sounds like y'all been beefing for at least a week. We, we, yeah, we are beefing a little bit. Well, so I, mean, you I, didn't, I didn't know until you didn't know you no, were beefing. I, I have to have beef. I have a little beef. That's the worst beef. Well, you tell, know tell, the, tell the people why so, you beefing. Okay, so let me tell, tell you the beef. Mad, let me tell you the beef. So. Case had a show for New Year's Eve at Funk Fest in Miami. We had been talking about the show for a couple of months. Like, this is what we're doing. This is New Year's Eve. So what do I do is I get down to Miami. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to go to Miami. I go down to Miami to support my bro. You know what I mean? For sure. Bring my boy Isaac Keys with me. Plays Diamond on Power. Uh, we had a great time in Miami. We, we go on there for the show. Right. I'm talking to Seuss. You know okay. what I'm saying? Back and forth, making sure stuff is together, making sure everything Notice is cool. Notice how he's bringing in variables. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 he's doing it all. We it's get to my, we, right the plan now. is to get to Miami. We're gonna be there for the whole weekend because Funk Fest is two days. Okay. He's performing on the second day, which yeah. is New Year's Eve. We're like, okay, cool. So we'll get there. We flew in the same day. So you made day one. May day one. Bet. No case. Day this two. Case. Day I was two. supposed to be there the first day. Doesn't matter. We, don't bring we it up. Supposed to, we supposed to connect. Day two. Case goes on stage. Did you see I, the we show? We had the show. Bet that. No case after that. Nah, you no weren't there. Up. I heard you weren't there. I was there. Don't play that's, yourself. That's not what I heard. Okay, what you Since heard? Since you're bringing in variables, didn't you say I don't even think Gerard is here yet? First of all, go call Mel B. Easy right now I don't because have to I call seen, nobody. I saw him. First of all, Mel B. Easy told me they didn't use a smoke machine, and then I saw a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> let me tell you how I know. They did. Because they did. smoke machines. They did use make smoke my machine. voice go out. Yes, I know ah. that. And my voice went out. Yeah. Mel B. Easy told me. They lying to you. It wasn't no smoke machine. No, it was definitely hold a smoke on, machine. Hold on. So then somebody sent me a video, and what do I see? A smoke machine. Smoke. No, it was definitely Damn. a smoke machine. That, but the thing is, so it was it was crazy. So that, just, that obliterates anything. It, do, it really doesn't. It really Next, doesn't. It really his doesn't. credit's bad. Yeah, it's, no, it's it, kind of No, it, it, yeah. it was. But okay. but the funny thing was, so when you were supposed to go on at four twenty, right? We're walking in so the venue. So you saying I was late? No, no, no. Listen. Oh, okay. We walked in the venue. We walked in the venue at four. Right. Right. And and I and I can hear him. Eddie, look at look, there he is right there, there he is right there. Come on in, man. Um, we walked in the venue and he was singing, and I was like, wait a minute, it's four o'clock. So right. he was late. No, no, no. You supposed to go on at four twenty, right? It sounded like you missed so the they, show. No, they switched That's the they switched the like. order. That's what it feels <laughs> like. No, no, they switched the order, so I was able to still see everything. Right. I'm just you saying what saying? it feels like. Right, right. Ladies right. and gentlemen, forget all this. Ed Lover has joined us in the building. Case, what's up, dog? This what's is who up, I was teasing up, you about a little bit ago. Always a pleasure, Pepper. What's going on, man? Ed, Ed, Ed. Man, 
This, this is gonna be a good time. Ed no, Love no, but let him finish this bullshit. Okay, no, 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 no. Who cares about that now? Nah, nah, nah. Nah. No, Ed oh, wants man. to hear this bullshit yeah, that you so said. So David having beef with him since New yeah, Year's Eve. Yeah, I'm a little mad. And, that, and so, now it's coming out. Right, God, right, so right. look, okay, so he does Funk Fest on um, New Year's Eve weekend, right? Right. Yeah. In, in, Miami, in Miami, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Peep Game. So you know, we talking whatever. We sit. We setting the whole thing up for us to be out and have New Year's Eve together. All do all our thing, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. I get out of Miami, bro. Yeah, yeah, Joe. No, you, 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 you ain't gonna hear. Don't you worry about it. You ain't gonna hear. Is it this one? I don't know which one. Did you turn it on? I don't think you plugged in. Let me know where you are. Ain't no music playing. Yeah, ain't no music playing. Right, right, right. Like, exactly. So, 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 so we get down to Miami. You know what I mean? And the next thing I know, there's no case. Like the whole weekend goes by, no case. Uh huh. I'm like. Bro, like, what are we doing? We go to the party for Tank's birthday, all of that. Uh -huh. okay. So the video, uh -huh. though, he performed. Yes, we were there for that at the Funk Fest. But right. he but we were supposed to, to be, we were supposed to all be hanging out for uh -huh. New Year's uh -huh. Eve and kicking it. Okay, but you did perform. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh -huh. all my other shit is whatever he do, what he wanted to. No, no Ed, Ed, not, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> Ed, don't do that now. Ed, understand? You can't come in hot like that. Like so does he. But let him finish. So let him get this off. It's his birthday. We so let him get this off. But we do the plans and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? And we get out of Miami. I even see Case once. The whole weekend. Right. Let me know when it's my turn. Go ahead. Okay. Here's the thing. He's he gonna say some bullshit. Watch. No, I promise you, I'm not. See, this is not terrestrial radio, so I can cuss on this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. First of all, when I have a show, I don't do the shit you was doing. I know this. Hey, meet us at this. No, nigga, this is where I'm at. Come fuck with me. For and sure. I said that to you. And what did you say? Well, we over here. Okay. Ah. Well, I'm over here. Hold on to that, cause it wasn't just. No, that's real shit. That's real shit. I don't. I don't just be all willy nilly. Nigga, you act like I'm a fan or something like that, nigga. It doesn't is, matter. This is, is not. Like, not this is how long y'all know each other? What? Way eight, too eight, fucking eight, long, apparently. 18, 19 years, maybe. Okay. Way too so fucking we, long, apparently. We probably got like 21, 22. No, years nigga, right. we got 26. Yeah, we got about 26. Because Tuzzy Teasman came out 26 years ago. Okay, 26 years ago, right? So I know this dude. So you know him. So let me tell you something. I have invited Case. Oh, oh shit. yeah, let's go. Oh, let's, let's go. To come to Patio Social Club. <laughs> when we were sitting outside in the summertime. I came. I, you came once. But <laughs> Wait, that's Chicago Chase. Pizza Patio? That's case. But you know, that yeah, is yeah. true. Okay, okay. That's, that's case. true. That is true. That, that is Case. That's, that's Case. So you but can't, you can't take it That's kind of true. I, that I, is Case. You didn't show up once. But after that, you are going to go. Right, 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 right. right. Now back to you, yeah, nigga. Exactly. <laughs> How long I stay here? Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's you know true. why? You know why? No, I'm gonna tell you why. No, that's a good point, Ed. You right. I was, I was, yeah, I was glad that my nigga Ed invited me. Right. But I'm like, it's hot as witch pussy out here. Right. It was hot as witch. Well. Did you hot. smoke cigars? Is that? Is that? Where's that? In New no, York? Or here really. You know what? Let me tell you. Okay. Back in high school, I had a teacher, Mr. Uh -huh. D'Onofrio. That's okay. my dude. He was giving us cigars. So it's me, CL Smooth, um, wow. Pete Rock, all of us outside because we used to cut eighth period. Oh, sounds like it. I'm inhaling them. He's like, you're not supposed to fucking inhale it because right. he's very Italian. Right, right. He, I'm like, I'm inhaling it. See how smooth is choking. All he's the rapper. Be. Okay. <laughs> it's a cigar, bro. Right. That's why I'm you don't smooth inhale. Smooth if, you, like if you're not going to inhale it, then why, why <laughs> smoke it? So, Everybody so, know you don't so, inhale no cigar? So what you're saying is you just smoke a cigar to fuck up your breath. No, you pretty, no, pretty much, yeah. No, this man, no, I wasn't inhaling that. It's like wine, man. I tasted nothing. Well, y'all niggas is real bougie. You didn't search for anything in it, no, man. No, just the fact that y'all said flavor and then followed up with profile, yeah, that's telling me that you niggas is way fancier than me. <laughs> I'm just it's like one. It's, yo, it it's say it's saying on my license. It say regular nigger. Y'all niggas on some bullshit. I believe it. I believe it. That's the damn shame, man. All right, man. Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll deal with the beef and stuff later. Hey, we glad. Yeah, I mean, we should be squad. Yeah. 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 Nah, people don't give me the still, still still out there. It's your birthday. You gonna roll it, out with it, the beef? But people don't. Uh, whatever. You gotta let it go. Birthday, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you gotta let it go. Happy birthday. All day. Please believe. All right, We got about what two weeks left. My ex-wife. My ex-wife's the first. My son is the seventh. And my brother Dan Tanner right now. Dan somewhere celebrating. Dan is my today. Today. My wife's today. Saturday. Saturday. Today on Saturday. My wife's is on Saturday. Oh yeah, for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. Capricorn. Capricorn. We out here, man. We yeah. out here. Uh, my I'm ex is today. Right. Who? My ex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fuck true. off. That is true. Yeah. We're not going there either. Yeah, today, happy, birthday, happy birthday, ex. Yeah, happy birthday, yeah, happy birthday to all our exes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to all of them. No, no. <laughs> right, right, right. I didn't say right. that. I didn't say that. Ex-girl to the I didn't, next girl. I didn't say that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say ex -girl that. Ex-girl to the next girl. Look once at again, me now. Once again, the Kickback Podcast, Gerard J. Case. Married. Cole Parker. Ed <laughs> Love right here. Yeah. Um, Ed Definitely. and I. Ed me and too. I, yeah, well, damn it. To my ex. My ex's birthday January 1st. We were married. She's my ex-wife. No, uh, no, no, no. We, we got two kids. Well, so we unhappy birthday to you, but <laughs> happy birthday you know to the kid's mother. 
However that go. That's too difficult. Whatever them, gets them you holiday out of the trouble birthday with the wife. crazy, man. My ex-wife was Christmas. Oh, man. Yeah, them, them holiday huh? birthday women crazy. Her Nigga, birthday was on Christmas. Let me tell you some shit. Holiday birthday so women crazy, ex, man. So my ex, 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 ex. Okay. Our anniversary was December 20th. Okay. Our son's birthday was December 21st. Copy. My stepson's birthday was December 30th. Okay. Daughter's birthday is January 20th, and her birthday is Valentine's Day. I knew he was going to break up. Oh, yeah. I yeah. knew it. Well, her birthday two days after mine. But, dog, yeah. that's too Call much shit. Aquarius. But that, that's yeah. too much shit. But your yes, shit ain't Valentine's Day. That's, no. that's a lot. I knew right then we weren't going to make double, it. That's double yeah. gifts. That's yeah. triple. <laughs> you don't even like a motherfucker. Can we talk about thinking? something for a minute since you brought up the subject of Valentine's Day? Uh-huh. Just do it. When the fuck did Valentine's Day become a one-way thing? Uh, like, I like Valentine's Day gifts too. How the they fuck supposed to be like odd nah. year shit or some shit like that. I really that. hate it. I really hate Valentine's Day. I hate Valentine's Day. Because it's two days after my birthday. Oh, copy because that. Because I get a gift, oh, yeah. then I got yeah, to yeah, yeah, spend yeah. money. Yeah. I hate yeah, that. That's yeah, fucked yeah. up. I hate it. But I told my wife, you got a wedding anniversary now. You know more Valentine's well, Day. Well, here's what I that's learned. Single here's what I learned <laughs> from doing shows in the Midwest. No, it's not. <laughs> you got to celebrate Sweetest Day. Somebody yeah, said Valentine's Day is for women. Yeah, Sweetest Day. Sweetest Day. Sweetest. What is that? I've never heard of it. I heard it was Sweetie's Day when I was no, in Chicago. No, it's Sweetest. It's all Sweetest Day. It's just sweetest day. It's it's all sweet. fake ass thing to get us some yeah, money. Yeah, that one is for the dudes. That one, Sweetest Day is for the dudes. Oh, Valentine's Day for me too. I'd rather be a fucking Valentine than a Sweetest nigga. <laughs> Hey, listen. I'm not giving out no gifts unless I'm giving some shit. Anything that saves me money. I'm not giving out no gifts unless I'm giving some shit back. I heard that. Well, you might. Reciprocity. What you consider a gift? Thank you. Got you. Gotta have reciprocity. He let that wrong hell. He he Lauren Hill was yeah. too. Yeah. She did say that. You're right. She's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, obviously, he wasn't getting nothing from Wyclef, huh? <laughs> right. Well, no, no reciprocity <laughs> coming to that. Yeah, <laughs> no reciprocity coming to <laughs> that. None. That relationship. He's like, shut up and suck this dick. Oh, We had jumped the shark. We had jumped the shark. Someone, please. Nah, I'm just taking right, Call 911. <laughs> Cole, your holiday was good. Hey, man, always, man. You know, his holiday was good as a motherfucker. I will tell you something. She needs to thank that nigga. Hey. Because that nigga gave her the angst and the anger and the emotions that to she be needed superstar. for the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Absolutely. Hill. That goddamn Are whole sure album him? was about Lauren uh, Yeah, hell yeah. You sure? Okay. I'm yeah. just making sure. I'm just making sure. You know what? <laughs> Why was it you, nigga? <laughs> no, I, but I can tell you the album that was about me. Okay. But I ain't gonna tell you on the air. Okay, okay. Tell we'll me. Talk about we, we, hey. I am gonna tell you, just not on the air. Why Probably. not? Because it's a birthday. It's a birthday. It's a birthday. That's what makes podcasts podcasts. Right, exactly. exactly. When you I tell them, you can't. I didn't fuck with this before. I'm not falling for this now. Why bring it up? Why Why? Why would he say that? That's what she said. All right, let me ask you a question. Is the person who made the album about you birthday today? Damn, good, great question. Oh, it's great. possible. Oh, oh man. You I know what it is. We know what it is. I know what it is. We know exactly what it is. So, yes. Wait, what album is it? I know what it is. Oh, that I don't know. I don't. I, don't, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I know he's I'm involved. De- I'm deaf in this ear. The emotions with him was, was involved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all it takes. Well, that means it had to be one of the earliest, at one of the early joints then. because no, the it was time, the third one. Possibly. Hmm. Ah! <laughs> he was involved then. But that feels good wait, when you look Ed, back. Ed was in the game. Ed, Ed, Ed was involved. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, but he was once removed. That's my nigga. Yeah, yeah I right, feel right. good. We was, in, we was in Peppermint Lounge. Wow. You remember? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shit. That should feel good, man. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. To me, it does. Because it wasn't about you. I have a song that I have a real big hit record that was. I had a lot to do with the record. Right. So, and I'll tell y'all what it was. was it, it was, was Weak it? by SWV. Ah. Hmm. When I was dating Leanne. When I was dating oh, Leanne. Man. Nigga. Okay. Now that you said the name. Yeah. So there was somebody that I was, we can call it dating. Yeah. But like uh, somebody in her group was like, yo, she was about to fuck your car up. She did she, fuck my car up. I was about to say. But wait, they was like, yo, she fucked up Ed Lover car. Yeah, I'm she like, did. if she would have fucked my car up, I'd have fucked her up. What? Yeah. yeah, I chased her. Now, I'm not saying no names. I chased her. But no. I chased her. I shot at Leanne. But, but I was no, so no, fucking that. pissed at her. She oh. destroyed my fucking That's car. That's what bro. I heard. Yeah. But oh my, my, my God. car what? led because, yeah. women be crazy, but wait, because somebody else in somebody's group, I don't know who, came and got her. They oh, was like, okay. But they was like, yeah, she fucked up Ed Lover's no, car. Fuck my oh, ch- I had a, uh, uh, a Pathfinder. Oh. Yeah. And when, when she was done, it was a dirt. It was. She <laughs> it fucked was that truck up. Lost his path. Damn, yeah, yo. Damn. Damn. 
And and that's the first thing they said. I'm like, well, y'all snitching on my nigga Ed. You lucky right, that's right, my dude. Right, He's right, like, right. Yeah, she fucked up Ed Lover car. You know, yeah, people talk did. shit, man. That's what they do. Yeah, she did. That's what they do when they get angry. And it wasn't no social media. I never experienced right, that. Right, right, right. But uh-huh. it was, it was nigga media shit. shit, you know? Yeah. And it, was, and it wasn't even called for. It, right. I mean, it wasn't called for. Yeah, it when, wasn't called for. A lot of times I, I, I have said that I don't I don't really like to talk about Leanne like that too much. Right. I just wish Leanne all the best. They still on the road. Yeah. They still making money. They still do their thing. God bless her, but I remember she went on a part on uh, Large Jamal podcast, and just and I was like, why you keep still bringing this old uh, shit? Up? She you hurt. know what I mean? Uh, yeah, you know, nothing wrong with a motherfucker that's better, man. They just tough know. to do. I got with y'all the best, man. Yeah. God bless her, but she did fuck my shit up. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. It was unnecessary. No, no that's what I heard. That's what I heard. <laughs> but my shit was unnecessary too. Whoever I'm talking about, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm like this nigga about to start talking third person. Yeah, yeah no, and then K said, <laughs> yeah, 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 because no, the nigga K told me that somebody in whoever's group right. was like, whoever's I had group. to come and get her because she was about to fuck your car. No, the fuck, she wasn't. Man, maybe that's just a who, thing. Who well, started that? Like, who gave people the idea to do stuff like that? Angela like, Bassett. I want, no, that's Angela what I was it probably was Coretta Scott King. <laughs> For her, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Now that we don't heard the FBI text. <laughs> yeah, I bet you she fucked up a car. My man had bitches, dude. Oh, they? man. And some of them was Caucasian. Yeah. yeah. The Caucasian involved. I mean, they, you know, they got to get the motherfucking movement moving. Man, but then again, but he, was, know, uh, he was 30 something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was yeah. in his 30s. Huh? He was in his 20s. Yeah. He was in his 20s when the movement first yeah, started. Yeah, he died when he was 38. 38 or 39. He was in the movement for 12 years. Imagine that. He was in his 20s. He was just a old You're fucking celebrity. Yeah, young. Preaching? You're yeah. a celebrity everywhere. Yeah. That was like, you need to give me rich. some pussy Dude, because I need hands on you. <laughs> Here's Richard Pryor and one for his up, right? <laughs> let me lay these hands on you. God damn it, anime. You the crew. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All funny. y'all ain't shit. Y'all ain't gonna be high. shit. Do like they pastors listen to gospel music when they fucking and shit? No. Let me yeah. tell you some funny shit. No, no, no. My wife today was like, yo. She was like, I was just on TikTok. Uh, and she said it was a dude. He said the chick was divorcing her, her husband because he likes to fuck to gospel him. Ah, uh, heminals. And so I that asked her, I'm like, then. I mean, we, we can have an open mind right, here. Right, right, right. I was testing her. Oh, okay. Well, there's one way to make a mess. Don goes Frazier. Right. Yeah, down goes Frazier. But hey, no. it is what it is, man. Right. Some, you know, everybody got their shit. I'm not fucking yeah. the gospel hymns. No, I'm not doing that. Yeah, yet. that's a little tough, no. man. No. I don't know, swing low, depending on what she's doing, might be all right. <laughs> <laughs> swing <laughs> low. <laughs> Nigga. Say hey, like, what you talking no, about? No, let me tell you shit. You got to listen to Off the Wall while you got the sex swing rocking. Oh, now you didn't hear that from me. Swing. Okay. You didn't hear that from me. Well, you you know? it off the wall. And you got the swing. You got the swing. Yeah, the one that's the mounted from the ceiling. Oh yeah. Not, not, not the cheap shit. shit. Nah, not that's the, the cheap shit. one. Yeah, you got to get the expensive shit, shit that come from the okay, ceiling. Okay. That's what I heard. <laughs> you got to explain that shit what? to kids though. But nah, you know, no, you shit don't. On the door, you just blow up and leave up. Nah, you better get, get and you push them a couple right. times, get them out the room. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, yo, they you good. Push, excuse that crust, yeah. baby. Excuse Dude, the crust. You push them while they mothers in the swing of time. <laughs> oh, that's even no, 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 not that, not that. Get in there on your mother's life real quick. Bitch, we about to do a three to get the baby pregnant. Now you're A and E. Don't put this baby in bed. Little June June won't go to bed. Get the baby in breastfeed while I hit this pussy. Y'all wild. See now, y'all niggas is jumping the shark now. Yeah, y'all true. We already jumped the shark. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a wrap now. That's you know, the best way to prep for a threesome. So listen, um, we wanted to have a conversation, and Ed is so which so one you niggas killed Santa Claus? Would you calm down? Right, you nobody, want to bring nobody, this nobody back did. Calm so you, are, Santa, you didn't. Santa, never mind. What time? You need You were so much more relaxed last time. I don't want none of that shit. I, no sir. You were so much more relaxed last time I was yeah, here. Yeah, but I drove to this joint today, so you know what I'm saying. I'm trying. Hey, listen. Yeah. Uh, uh, I drove to this piece, right? Hey, that's tough right there. That's why I got a label on it. Anything I don't label on, I don't want none of it, man. Hey, man that's licorice. Hey, y'all get a little juice. Anyway, we wanted to. Um, oh, you can give me that. Cup. We wanted to celebrate. <laughs> we continue to celebrate the 50 years of hip hop. You know, this is a this is a big moment for people that grew up in it, for people that yeah. that are influenced by it. And having you come in, we were just talking about it earlier, is like perfect for the celebration of 50 years of hip hop. Mm-hmm. We want to have the conversation tonight and really get deep into everybody's you know memories and and you know you're one of the people that brought hip hop to the forefront. And you'll always be known as that. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, let's have a conversation, man, about 50 years of hip hop and how we've all been influenced by it and the things that it's allowed us to not only think, but but to experience. And to live. And to live. But before you start, I want to say this. Hip hop wouldn't be the hip hop that it is now without you and Dr. Dre. Absolutely right. Because y'all brought it to... Middle America, which is, fab, which is fab, Spanish fab, for white fab, people. Fab, fab first and yeah. foremost, yeah. 
Yeah, all like it, it, was, it was it was it was us thing. Yeah. yeah, and then when y'all came, it, it made it oh, okay. We like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It now, was it, we did feed it. To yeah, them. y'all, y'all, yeah. and and uh, we had now, the opportunity to now, do thank y'all you, also, MCV. y'all also made Young MC be able to have a career, but that's okay. Yeah, well, you're from Hollis Queens. <laughs> <so> <laughs> no, he's not. Right. Yes, he is. Young MC. Yes, yes. he is. Yes, now you mad. mad. Now you mad. Know. Yeah. You thought he was from the West Coast. Now you mad. No, oh, nigga from He's Hollis. definitely not West Coast. Hollis Queens County. No, because he was on. What's his address? Right, right, right. Right, right, right. I don't know. But he's on Hollis Queens, too. He's on right, Hollis Queens. Right, right. But no, no. Y'all, y'all brought it to Middle America, right. which allowed it to flourish and, and become the, the thing that the TV monster Rats that it is the, now. At the time, Your on TV Rats was an international show. For right. sure. So we are on in damn near every country. Right. So they got a taste of hip hop, too. Because, you know, I had a Nigerian dude one time tell me I used to get up and make sure I go to bed so I can get up at midnight because your own TV raps came on at midnight in Nigeria. And it's like, we never yeah. saw hip-hop videos. Right. We wasn't on our radio. Yeah. Right. We ain't know nothing. So that's what they, that was their taste. All right. niggas was late to work. Yeah. Japan, China, <laughs> right. all over the place. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I, I don't crazy. know if you realize how much that... Well, I don't know how much y'all realized at the time how much y'all was furthering the culture. No way. No. I'm sure you realize it now. No, no. But at the time, I'm and sure you didn't realize did how for. much you was furthering right. you know, the culture. No, we did it for, for real for the culture. Right. Right. Like, you hear a lot of cats now, they come and they sit on a podcast or something, and they talk about, you know, what they're doing for the culture. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, no, you're not. I'll be watching, and I'll right. be like, you don't do shit for the culture. You do, you shit do it for, for you. You do it for the money. Yeah. Right. right. We did difference? it for the culture. Right. The, if there was no money involved, I would have did you on TV rights any fucking right. way. But the money helped. Well, the the money helped. Right, right, right. Man, Yo, if you don't have a mic, don't talk, Ralph brother. Daniels, <laughs> yeah, you got a mic, don't talk. Yeah, that was Uncle Ralph was really the first... Video show that I saw, video right. music box. Yeah, me too. Right? Me too. But R- Ralph was, I mean, I think, I'm not sure, was he that passed Jersey. Carlos De Jesus and Hot Tracks on before yeah. Ralph. New York Hot Tracks. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that was before that? Ralph. Nah, he was too young. I don't, I don't My remember. mom used to babysit him <laughs> yeah. back when Hot Tracks wow. was on. Carlos De Jesus was the dude. Yes, sir. I forgot that about did, that. That did Hot Tracks. But right? they used to play. Culture Club in yeah. between hip hop, yeah, yeah. 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 But Uncle Ralph, when he first came out with Video Music Box, it was it was New York City based. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And MTV was a, a much bigger phenomenon than yeah. that. And because of what Young TV Raps was able to do, that's why BT turned around and put Rap City on, right? And mm-hmm. stuff like that. Wow. You know? Then you had the box. Yeah, we came right. way before right. him. No, I knew that, but I'm just saying. Yeah, you know. So a- um, culturally, it was something. That I was really into it because I was a fan, man. Mm-hmm. I was fan that y'all don't know how many times I fanned out on that show. Though. Word. But I just try to just keep my composure. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was a fan of each and every one of them dudes that stepped on that show. I was a fan of Kane. I was a fan of Rock Kim. That's dope. You know what I mean? So for me to be able to talk to them, public enemy, huge fan, Stetson Sonic, oh. huge fan for for Chuck D to know me on a name to name basis. Mm-hmm. Even that was to, some shit. To this day I bugged the fuck yeah. out about yeah. that yeah. shit. Yeah. You know, Nigga, we seen Chuck D in the airport, but he was doing something. I was like, I ain't gonna say nothing. Right. I'm, like, still I'm like, should I say something? I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> but <laughs> we told him, I'm like, so oh, on yeah. my mind. Yeah. <laughs> gonna start rapping on Refuse you. Refuse know I mean? to move. <laughs> to no cane and the, right. and the meat yeah. iced tea. The first time I ever went to LA, Ice T took me around in yeah. his 560 and shit. Right, we, for sure. My favorite episode is the NWA times. one when, when Easy E pulled out the joint. Yeah. The, the fucking. Uh, to be a part of Easy E's what he had, wet and wild, yeah, yeah right. wet and wild pool parties in Absolutely. LA. The fucking debauchery that went on at that motherfucker. Absolutely. Let's talk about that. Oh no, <laughs> can't wait for the book right. for that. You know, <laughs> to be to, to go to Miami and to see what Luke, Luke and, 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 yeah. and, and, and the two doing. live crew right. was doing was. It, I'm just still because amazed nobody would have right. known about that yeah. without y'all. I'm still amazed. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's so it's got to be so amazing to know you're in history presently. To be present in you know when it, it just, you know when it hit me recently. Okay, I was in New York and I went to the Universal Hip Hop Museum's pop up. Okay, and shout out to Rocky and them for what they're doing. They're getting ready by the summer. The fifty five thousand square foot Universal Hip Hop Museum will be open. Well, that's crazy. Where in that's the Bronx? Dope. In Bronx, the Bronx. Okay, in the Bronx, right? With with a well, theater, it's, it's with a be theater, Bronx. a restaurant, a memorabilia store, and. Everything. Affordable housing on top of ah, wow. the top of the building. That's right? even crazy. It's gonna be an, That's hip hop shit. It's right gonna there. be amazing. That's hip hop. But when I walked in there and I saw the Young TV Raps display, is when I first first time I said, "Shit, I'm in a museum." Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know that shit meant something. Right. Yeah, right. You, right. You're in a museum. Right. You know, I remember being on the set of of, of uh, 
Get Up by Salt and Pepper and Push It. Uh-huh. Because Ted Demi, who was one of the creators of Young TV Raps, was a friend of mine from high school. Right. I fuck with and, Ted Demi. Yeah, yeah, I fuck with Ted rest Demi. In peace, Ted. Yeah, rest in yeah. peace. And, yeah. and Ted directed those videos. So I remember being a fan. Copy. I'm in fucking Rolling with Kid and Play video. Right, right, right. I was a security guard at that high school. That's wow. how they got to school. That's just crazy. So in a little lunchroom scene, I'm giving out fucking lunch before they had a food fight. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Dog, yeah. My two favorite episodes Same, of your man. MTV yeah. raps is the one where you kept making Tupac shut up. Yeah, that was him. And the one where Flavor Flav Drop some shit out of his pocket. Oh, that was crack. That, that was no shit. Right. Yeah. I, I didn't say it. You said it. <laughs> I didn't say it. Nigga, those are my crack. two favorite shit, episodes. That was crack. That was a no, no. lot of Friday. They, they was before, he dropped that's, some crack out of his pocket. That's two people that I've seen drop crack out of their pocket yeah, on yeah. stage. Yeah, absolutely. The MTV VMAs, Bobby Brown performed. <laughs> yes, I saw that too. Yeah. 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 And me and him talked about yeah, that shit. Yeah, the crack dropped out of his pocket. Uh, and, uh... Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav. We were but doing that public the one when he was talking about the Hughes brothers, yeah. and he kept saying, yo, shut up, and kept they, covering his and mouth. And his fucking right. ass got indicted because of that. Of course. Wow. Because they came and, and subpoenaed that tape. Of course oh. they did. And uh, he got found and I'm guilty. Sure that was probably I, the, like I, I bet you that was something. the yeah. first case of that. Yeah. He had to do 10 days or some shit in jail or pay a little fine or something. So I was trying to tell him to yeah. shut up. But no, you ain't telling him. He kept going like this. He was like, boom. Like, Pog, shut up. He was like, yo, stop talking. I remember that episode. Yeah, those are my two favorite episodes. I do remember that now. Damn, that's crazy, man. So like... Like, I used to work with Kevin Black. Yeah, I know Kevin so Black. So, Kevin Black been my dude for, <laughs> since motherfucking, like, 90, right? So, I've got to witness a lot Damn, of the West like Coast years history, ago. like, Death Row early as I was there, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I remember being in it like, this That's shit like is crazy. And for me, I was young dude. You know, I'm like 18, 19, right. and I'm like, it's already crazy that Blood's Chris in the same room. Like, that's real work stress. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because at any point in time, it could go left. You know, so yeah. the fact that that could come together, you already knew it was part of something magical. And then everything that we touched out of there was motherfucking platinum plus. So yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Everything was gone, man. Yeah, that shit was crazy. It was yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah, and it was a, and, the culture. And it was, a, yeah. it, was a, it was a beautiful time, man, because you never knew what Dre was going to turn out to be. Right. You know, with that, that ear that he, he had. I knew he was a genius then. And his style... Is his early style. If you listen to early NWA, and Dre will tell you, he was influenced so much by the bomb squad. Absolutely. By what Public Enemy and them doing yeah. and the way they were putting that music together, man. So this being the 50th year in hip hop and me having 30 plus years in it. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Being able to put kids through college and master's degrees and shit. And everything that has been for me in my life has been an offshoot or some way somehow involved with hip hop. Yeah. Every single thing since 1989. That's dope. Everything. That's the third base episode and the conclusion. The last one with right. all the MCs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did yeah, that before. That. We did that before Arsenio did right, it. Right, 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 right. That's where Arsenio got that right. idea from. Yeah, we did out. Oh, that 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 is one of my one of my favorite episodes. That final yeah, everybody final man. episode. Everybody that we invited to come through for the majority what, of them came how, through. How much how much emotion was did you hold back like during that episode? Uh, every bit of it. Mm-hmm. Because my dream was to do ten years. Copy. That's my dream. 89 to 99, I'd have been right. straight. I could have bowed out gracefully. Right. The 96, they ended it. MTV ended it. Right. Um, and I, look, thank you, MTV, because yeah. you gave me a radio, a radio career. Right. You know, I started That's radio. That's your platform for life. I started radio in 93. Copy that. So, thank you, MTV. I'm right. fine with it. You know what <laughs> right, I mean? So, right. But to hold all that emotion in, because you caught up in the moment, and you watching Rakim and Kane and KRS one go back to back on some freestyle shit. Uh. And you know, Red Man, Met the Man. That's a special ed. Special ed. There's a right. whole, oh, shit crazy. There's a whole lot of dudes, crazy ass flavor flav jumping up and down and running all around the place. So so like like now with today's culture, right? And our kids nowadays have access access to so much so much information, right? Like right. I can only imagine being a kid now and being fucking information overload, right? So like now, you know, in, in our back when I I'm 50, you know what I'm saying? So I'm old ass hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So like when I grew up, it wasn't an easy way for a black man to show emotion. You know right. what I'm saying? And and for that to be so much emotion and not only feel like not only want to hold it back a little bit but feel that you have to. You know, like, imagine now, like, you could have just released that shit and it could have been cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and it would have been probably been a, a, a magical moment 
for everybody in that element to be able to release that type of tension. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, it, it was there. It was, a, it was in a magical time. And yeah. you, you're in the moment, so you don't understand what that moment's going to mean 10, 15, right. 20 years down but the line. But you know it's a moment. Yeah, yeah. it's a moment. Yeah, you know it's right crazy. there where it's being filmed. Yeah, you know this yeah. is like, you know this, this is, is it. Shit. You know, Salt and Pepper was there. They never even touched the mic. You know, they had... Uh, DJ Just, one of them was holding DJ Just. Wow. When he was a baby. Yeah, he was wow. a little boy. That shit's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. When he was signed to Biff 10, it was yeah. DJ Just a little neat. Right. Yeah, Just got, well, like four kids now. He still <laughs> tore with Bow Wow all over the yeah, place. That's crazy. He's yeah. a little kid. Wow. I gave Just his first pair of real turntables. Wow. Yeah, because I saw he's a, my man's right, kid. Right, right, right. And I saw the potential he had. Right, I had an extra pair of 12s. I was like, here. Yeah. Take these. Fuck them belt drive shits you got. Take these. Right. Have you ever told people yo, you yo, you don't, you don't yo, know Mike. Why, the why Yo MTV Raps ended. Because yeah, it wasn't Reigns. No, definitely wasn't Reigns. It it's was, the culture. It was MTV. Right, they yeah, just yeah. felt, they started playing hip hop into mainstream. Right. Right, especially after Hammer. After Hammer and Vanilla Ice, they started throwing <laughs> rap music. Mostly in, Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Yeah. Into mainstream. And they just felt like it wasn't a need for a specialty show on And there was other platforms doing it now. So now you got BET doing their thing a little bit. But BET couldn't fuck with Nah, BET wasn't there. But BET wasn't there yet, though. Ticket is my nigga. It was the mayor. Ticket wasn't even on yet. That's correct. I don't know what it is. It was Chris Thomas. Chris Thomas. Yeah, Chris Thomas. It was the mayor, right? So, you know, and the other kid that used to be with the mayor. he I forgot a little curly head dude. Why the... Prince de Jour? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. I'm mad you remember his name. <laughs> right. And the nigga ain't French. Why you got that name? Yeah. You got French, nigga. Right, right, right. Prince de Jour, and, and first it was the man, the mayor was a stand-up comedian. Right. And then they got Prince de Jour, and then I think after that. But it wasn't, it wasn't MTV. Right. Because yeah, yeah. MTV yeah. went to... You got to remember, 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 remember back in them days, they was playing rock videos, and then they played Michael Jackson. Right, right, right. And then, no, they were forced to play Michael Jackson. Yeah, of course they were. But what I'm saying is that's what they played yeah, next. They didn't want to play then, Mike. And right. they didn't want to play hip hop. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to play hip hop either. They didn't want to play Mike. Yeah. Right. Sony told them right. if you don't play they Mike, pull Mike everybody else. selling records. Sony said we'll pull everything right. off of this shit. Yep. And they wouldn't have survived without Sony's That's catalog. correct. So they were forced to play Mike. Damn. You know what I mean? And then they didn't want to play hip hop either. Yeah, they didn't want to play that either. Remember, Rick James sued him. Yeah. Right. He damn sure did. They didn't play Rick James. Did you see the first one? Run DMC, I think, was the first hip-hop yeah. video they played. That yeah. shit was like Aerosmith yeah. or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Walk, yeah. This, walk way. this Way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because it was Aerosmith. That is correct. Dummies not knowing that right. that was already a record we used to rhyme over in the record. park. Right. See, anyway, but niggas right. didn't know that. They didn't know they didn't that. Know they that. they right. think Run DMC did some spectacular no. shit. Jay was like, this, we fuck with this right. All they did, and, right. and what's funny, even the lyrics right. was the lyrics to, to the, the song. song. Right. Yeah, for sure. That was a Rick Rubin and Russell idea. Yeah. They was writing some other shit. And that's brilliant. D told me. And Rick was like, nah, Nah, just fuck it, fuck it through the just lyrics. Just say the lyrics. They rhyme yep. anyway, and they just... And what's that crazy... Blew what's up. crazy. Like that was their first rock rap record. Right. And that but shit took the them video. out of here. But no, they had rock no, box no, no, before no, no. that. But no, no, that was the first MTV, for Run video. MTV video. For Run DMC, right. they had already dabbled in rock. Right. They had sure. rock box out and right. King of Rock. Right. And King of Rock. Yeah, and but then they didn't have that video. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. But what's crazy, I was in a studio one day with... Well, he was Rev Run there. It was me, Rev Run, and Larry. Yeah. And I'm like, nigga, you Larry, you put him inside your cat like? Larry was like, Smith? Yeah. Rest in peace, Larry me, Smith. Yeah, rest in peace. Oh, me. that dude is responsible. Oh, he's a, he's a beast. And niggas don't even know. They don't he even don't, know. He don't As get the producer, credit that he, he deserves. He, he don't deserves. get the credit right. he deserves. But first of all, Larry Smith was responsible for Sucker MCs. Thank uh, you. That's sucker, all you need to know. I was in sixth sucker, grade. Sucker MCs is a record that Larry Smith had a, a band that Davey DMX was part of. Okay. Right? And it was called Orange Crush. And that song is called Action. You can Google it. It's the same drum pattern. Yeah. Wow. Larry took that drum pattern, recreated it for Run. DMC wasn't supposed to be on the record. Uh. At mm. all. Run said, D is my man. He got some rhymes. Because right. Run was supposed to be doing some other weird old shit. And then him and D got together. We and talked became about Run. all this in yeah. the studio right. that night. Yeah, it became yep. Run DMC. That's dope. So that's because of Larry. Then Larry went on to do all of Houdini's biggest records. Oh, right. wow. Larry all did them, so much shit that he gets records. no credit for. Yeah, all of them records. All of them Damn. records. Dog, we, we, was in, we was in Sony Studios in 2001. Me, him, and Larry. And I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but me and Run was drinking Hennessy 
He had he had the collar and all that. We were drinking Hennessy because God made Hennessy. You probably should have said all of that. No, God <laughs> made <laughs> Hennessy. <laughs> he turned water into wine. Said, he didn't turn into wine. That's almost like asking who has a Yeah, he didn't turn it into more water. He right. turned it into wine. Yeah, and we sit there and I was talking to it, and I'm like, yo, I didn't realize that Larry Smith did that much shit. Like, yeah, he, Larry put me inside the He's part the of the blueprint of hip hop. Yeah, and sofa, people don't realize that. The sofa that. drove off and we never came back. Wow. And he Dave probably, cut yeah. the record down to the bone. And now they that's David the DMX. That's one for the treble, two, two for, for the, the bass. bass. Come on, David D, let's rock this, this bass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, Dave. Dave cut the record down to the bone. I'm going to do the Ed Love Dance thing. We got enough space. Nigga, you don't. You don't want I ain't that. gonna battle today. I ain't gonna battle today. <laughs> yeah. So, Ed how, Ed, how does the meeting go when it's time and they're telling you that the show's coming to an end? How does that? Because the show is successful at this Management point. Management told us they just set y'all down and said. I ain't have to say that. They called us and said, "Listen, it's a good thing that we took this damn Hot ninety seven check because <laughs> <I know laughs> MTV right. is getting yeah. ready yeah. to uh, cancel. You know, cancel your MTV ride." Right? Wow, just like that. Yeah. Well, that's that's our manager used to be at that time was a manager for the Fat Boys too in right. that heyday. Charlie Stetler, <laughs> okay, who played Beaker and Crush Group. Yeah, okay, yeah. that was our manager. So Charlie was up front, and you know him and Mama the Mac, and we knew we kind of felt it. And Charlie just said, "Hey, man, they gonna they gonna end it, man. Thank God we got other shit in the fire." Yeah. So. You're Rest good. in peace, Marky D and yeah. Buff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those are my dudes yeah. right there. Marky D was my dude. Yeah, I love Mark, man. Man, talk, I love talk that about, dude. Let's talk about the progression, you know, as from the time the show starts, when things are still really fresh, people are kind of getting assimilated to what's going on. People are not used to it. They're not comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. And you and I are both on radio. We know that when you're familiar with stuff, it's easier for you to, 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 to digest. Yeah. If it's not familiar, people are scared of it, you yeah. know? But you go from that to... 95, 96 when it's ending. Talk about what you noticed over the progression, not only of the show, but the culture within, within those years. The, the, the progression of the show, I noticed that for the show, we went from a half an hour when I think Dre and I were on camera twice and everything else we did was voiceover. Right. Oh. We went from a half an hour to an hour a day with a new set. Wow. Right. And then we went from there to a Young TV Raps countdown that played on Saturdays, so that was six shows, and then to twice a day oh. on MTV, mm-hmm. and twice every Saturday. Wow. You know, so I watched the progression grow, and then I watched hip-hop grow at the same time, what a lot of people call that the golden era of hip-hop, mm-hmm. right? I watched how the music changed, the music became more street, mm-hmm. oh. you know? Groups came out telling their story the way they wanted to tell their story, and the music just grew and just got a lot better and, and it, a lot more intricate and, and a lot more thought provoking and a lot more people were testing different boundaries. Mm-hmm. And that's what the, the cats before them became laid hard. down. You know, I say hard. if anybody asks me, one of the most important records in hip hop history is the message. Yes, it is. And, and oh, for yeah. more than one reason. <laughs> the message showed cats that I can talk about reality. Mm-hmm. You know, just like The Message is one of the most important records, Rakim is one of the most important MCs. Oh, uh, easy. Rakim took it away from aggression. Rakim, if there's no Rakim or Kane, yeah. right, or KRS-One, you don't have Nas, Jay-Z, or Big Facts. at all. Right. Because everybody was aggressive. Everybody Listen, rhyming like Melly yeah. and, and, yeah. right, Even LL. Yeah. Right? Uh, even yeah. LL was yep. very aggressive. Mm-hmm. Running them it's a crisis. Ah, you know, yeah. everybody was there. Right. Rock kind of like, you know. Rakim showed you he could do something else. Check out my melody. Like, I put a gun. I'm letting knowledge be born. And my, he was cool. Was right yeah. You know, and, and, and uh, it was Marley told me. It was uh, conversational. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Very conversational. Conversational. Marley yep. told me a funny story, say, when he was doing my melody for Rakim. Which people which don't know did, that Marley Marl did that. Which they did in Queensboro, Queensbridge Project. Right. In Marley's apartment. Damn. He told... Rod, you got to stand up, man. Get into it. Rod sat in the chair and did that song. Word. He said, yeah. nah, this is how I get down. You know what I mean? Because the laid backness of right. him sitting down came yeah. through in that song. So he really, if for anybody, he changed father, the music. If you want to call that motherfucker somebody father, between him and G Rod, them, them niggas is not. Yeah. 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 Their whole style, their, everything they came, it comes from that style. Right. You know, so you watch it go from. Rakim, KRS One, Kane, Public Enemy, LL Cool J, Run DMC, Ice T, yeah, yeah. to slowly moving to Nas, Wu Tang, 
yeah. big and then later on Jay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It starts to become uh, more introspective and, and you can see it. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 But, and that's what the I, message I feel like, is. I feel like Rock Kim is like the, I feel like Rakim is the father to all of this shit now. To the to the that next to this level. whole yeah that to change level? to changing yeah. it changing because it? before that everybody was oh. yeah right. absolutely yeah. so so like so as a as a hip hop pioneer right like your top ten right Does no that, such thing okay so you don't fuck anybody that ever gave you too many people because I'm about to say do, do you involve no with thing. it right because no there's no such you have thing. to take new everybody new school, copy that you cannot leave out the importance of Melly Mel. That's First correct. of all, everybody before Mel yeah. was pretty much a throw your hands in the air, right. ooh tang, ooh tang, I don't want to go step. Everybody was DJ Hollywood, a busy B, right. bald in the dang, the dang. Right. Mel was right. giving you rhymes. Word. I'm going to tell you some shit that I said Word. to him one day. Never in history, outside of the 80s, niggas stayed knocking bitches out with their vicious charms. Right. I have never... I need to learn how to knock yes. somebody out with my bitch's charm. just your charm. Remember, everybody yeah. knocked her out Grand with their bitch's charm right before, before Melly Mel. That's all the Big Bang Hank rhymes is all That's the Grand Master Cass rhymes. Until he Melly spelled his name. Yeah, he did. The C A S A N O V A N. Until, until Melly y. Mel, until, until Melly Mel, everybody knocked the chick out with their bitches, and I've been trying to do it even, ever since. Yeah, you know, even back, you know, uh, Treacherous Three and all of them dudes, they were super aggressive. Everybody right. was aggressive. Mel put together whole fucking paragraphs of rhymes and forced the Furious and he Five painted some shit for to you. do the same thing. Oh. Yep. He forced them. Like, when you come from back in them days, if you listening to uh, Eddie Chiba or them or the DJs jump on the mic or Hollywood or Busy B, it was, more, it was more call and response before <laughs> Modi and Kaz right. and Mel and them came around, right? right? It was more throw your hands in the air when you like, just don't right, But they was hyping for DJs at the time. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. Mel DJs Mel, was a star. Melly Mel with the clientele. I'm going right. to rock your chimes and ring your bell. Right. I'm so bad and I'm, I'm so, so nice. Yeah, I write a rhyme yeah. on the ground and make the world turn twice. That's incredible. That's killing it. No niggas out there back there were right. saying it. So if you do a top five and you leave Mel out and the importance of Mel, or you, or you, you leave pocket. LL out. There's no Drake without LL. Correct. There is definitely no Drake LL was There's Drake no Kanye before. without right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Because LL was the first Handsome ass, sexy nigga. So sexy. And the nigga right. made a soul right. jam. Right. Right. When it wasn't cool. Hold on. When it wasn't cool. I need to hold on. No, no, no. But it wasn't cool to make it was a slow jam yeah. in hip hop. He man, made, he Ron made told that me possible. one time, Ron said, man, just when we thought we had this nigga, because L was his fiercest competition okay. at that time. He said, just when I dropped Peter Piper, and I thought this nigga was done. This nigga came out with I need love and fuck my whole shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 fuck my whole shit. Up. Hey, but that was like, now he got the chicks. That, that was like when the first albums catered to a female audience. Uh, uh, L was female that, driven, but L had right. to think about L. He's a total package. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Women loved him. Right. Niggas want to be with him. Right. Be, be him, not right. be with yeah, him. Yeah, I'm glad you well, changed that. Some niggas want to be with him. But right. women loved him. Niggas want to be of hip hop. Be him. Right. And MCs feared him. Right. And his hat was like a fucking shark's fin. <laughs> right. <laughs> and his hat was like a shark's fin. So he's ill, man. Nigga, you never had a hat that was Yo, like a shark's fin. Right. He's ill. Right. So you can't do a top ten without leaving somebody out that deserves to be in your top ten. And tell me, what's the criteria for it? Right, that makes it. a difference. At Def Jam, we used to refer to LL right. at Def Jam as Elvis. Right. That's right. not. That, Why is that? It's L. It's L. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nigga. Who's Wait, who's coming? <laughs> who, who you gonna get on the song? L? Nah, me and Elvis. Me and Elvis did three songs together that never came out. Oh, wow. wow. I didn't even know that. No. Hit him. He'll tell yeah, you. Matter of fact, you hit yeah. him. He'll okay. tell you. And yeah, L is wait, we did early. one with, we did right. one with Pharrell. Right. Oh wow. Me, him, and Pharrell. You need to put that out. <laughs> L is early. He got him. I told him to put it out. Mm. LL is early. I don't have it. Pharrell got it. Oh. And early L probably got, Elvis probably got it too. Kaz standout MC, right? right. Kumo D at the time. It's all the errors. Three. It's all errors. Right. It's error, man. Right. Slick, how you leave Slick Rick out of that equation? Facts. Absolutely. So what's your criteria? Is it record sales? Is it dope? Rick, think about Slick Rick. Slick Rick works off of Two singles and one album. Yep. <laughs> right. And made a whole still, fucking still career. Still making history. And motherfuckers <laughs> will still come out to see him. To this right. day. Lottie Dottie. Hold on, hold on. Lottie Dottie the show and yes. that album. I got a better one for That's you. Just crazy. I did a show with Slick Rick, right? Oh. This nigga's foot sat right here and did not move. 
Now, mind you, I went on before him. Nigga, I'm all over this. I'm free as a bird to fly right. about on stage. I'm going crazy. This nigga sat his foot right here, and this foot did not fucking move. Oh, and he destroyed me, nigga. Nigga, look. I remember when Rick came back. I'm going to post the picture tomorrow. Look, we was at Impact Record Convention, I want to say, in fucking Nashville at Opryland. And they had a little showcase. Nope, I'm lying. We was in Miami. He was doing a holla holla shit with uh, Ja Rule and shit. It was that yeah. time. Is that when so, he broke his ankle? No. So, well, I don't know if that's when he broke I was his ankle. With but that's the time when LL did a showcase and had <laughs> motherfucking damn Slick Rick come out and he came out on the throne under the ground. It was dope as shit. Smoking yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was like his comeback and all he had was fucking two songs. See? And that's all he needed. It's just fucking amazing. Well, no, no, because he had and those two it. songs. Yeah. And killed it. Yeah. yeah. Motherfucking Ducky came well, out. All, he dropped the of, beat. First of all, you gotta think of a children's story is one of the greatest records ever, ever, ever in life, right? ever. Mona ever. Lisa. Is it better than Mona? With, I was about with to no say, instruments. Is it Mona Lisa? Lisa? First of all, with no fucking instruments. <laughs> it's done. And the show. Right. The show was <laughs> Remember how anticipated Slick Rick's album was? Yes. It was, that, was, that, 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 was that, those, those, that was the first highly anticipated album in hip hop. That wow. I can remember. It was that. The wait, next one, the wait, next wait, one wait, was Ice Cube. Wait, 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 wait. The next one after oh, yeah, that, Ice Cube was hard. Hold on, hold on. Before that, um, what about I'm Bad? Raising Hell. What about Bigger and Deffer? Because that was what, what was it? Was it? Yeah, Bigger and Deffer. Bigger and Deffer. Yeah, that was 14. And, and Raising Hell. Run DMC's well, Raising Hell. That was anticipated yeah, like that. Hell yeah. Well, from, I remember. What I remember, it was the ones I can remember, because I was like 16, it was Slick Rick's album was. Like, oh, we everybody got to get this. Great, great of Slick Rick. Yeah, yeah. That's it. it was that one. Then the next one after that was Ice Cube. Then he went to jail. Right. Remember, he was in jail what? for like six, for like six years. Yeah. Then he was going to deport him after that. They so sure was. He missed his... The his prime. Yeah. He missed his, his prime. That's exactly what happened. He's it's Muhammad crazy. Ali. Yeah, he missed his prime. That's what they did to Muhammad Ali. He's still fucking relevant. So, but how can you say <laughs> greatest MCs ever... And don't say Slick Rick. And don't say Melly Mel. Because right. it's all errors. Right. Yeah, you're right. It's, you're errors. Right. it's errors. And like you said, so it's, it's a, criteria. Because there's too many things There's too many things to judge off of when it comes to hip-hop. That's why like, you can't right. do the top but, but 10. Can you you got to say, you gotta right. say, like, you got to specify what you're talking about. And it's funny you said that because I have this conversation with people all the time. And I always say the same thing. He said, you can't, ain't no top 10. Unless you tell me specifically top 10, top 10 uh, selling artists or right. top 10 lyricists. No, like, you got to tell me. We're not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I feel you. No, you got to you. You. put Vanilla Ice in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got that's to. Why and 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 that's why we don't do that. And that's why we don't do that. You have to, right? But, yeah, but that's, you got to be in that. That's why we don't do that. Boy. So it's like, what exactly <laughs> are you talking wait, about? That's why we don't do that. You got to put Soulja Boy And to me, it's like, that. that is more of a credit to the evolution of hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? He was the first to have a million downloads on the phone. Yo, meet me outside. I ain't trying to fight. Meet me outside. Meet me outside. Yeah, that's Draco, Draco, nigga, Draco. Meet me outside. Meet me outside. That's the conversation that's hard. Hey, yo, go. You know, so. Stop the bullshit, huh? <laughs> but I'm telling you, you know, that's how you have to go criteria. But right. I always feel like people that are pioneers, sometimes you're not even, we're not even open, right? Open to new age artists. You know, like, like, you know, you know what's the, the problem Coles with hip hop? Now, you know what I'm saying? Always, nice. We always want to top amazing. 10 it. We always want to top 10 in hip hop. Uh -huh. It's like, to, to me, it's like the NFL Hall of Fame. If you can't tell a story of hip hop without this person, that person, Right. That's should be what it, it should be. Right. It shouldn't be a top ten because it can't be a top ten because hip hop is fifty years old. It should be a whole thing. Yeah, we got a museum coming. Right. You, we need a whole museum. You know you that's, that's next. It's yeah, that's next. That's, that's, the next yeah. that's the next project. Yeah, that's, that's next. After, after the Universal Hip Hop Museum opens, yeah, we get to it. The Hall of Fame still need to be in it. Yeah, I'm first ballot. I know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All day. Clear my nigga Dre in there, baby. And Fab. Now hold on. We first ballot. Now y'all don't want to talk about C Smooth. I remember in 87, I was a rapper. My name was C. Smooth. Oh, here we go. <laughs> what I realized, Ed, is that I was trash. Okay. Least and that I early. should continue to sing. Me too. Right. No, no. I couldn't sing, but I realized I was trash as a no, rapper. No, no, no. Not as trash as me. Is Battle yeah. Walk me going to be in the <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it. But the Ed Lover Dance gonna be in there. You know, I use that as one of my jokes when I do stand up. <laughs> Word. Yeah, I use I use that shit as a joke. I yeah. say, y'all motherfuckers know me. Y'all y'all know I did books, I did movies, I did TV, I did an album. Well, y'all niggas ain't buy my album, but you know what <laughs> I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Hilarious. Yeah. At least you're not Nick Cannon. No. What um yeah. I, I said that out loud. He did. He did. So, no, we did, we did so did Vanilla Ice, nigga. Yeah. Me and Dre did five hundred thousand. No, hold on. Hold on. 
soda, vanilla ice. Don't say that again. Vanilla ice did 10 million. Like this nigga Nick. said. Stop right. shitting on Nick like he don't spit. Nigga, nigga spit. Uh, spit on the spit. ground. <laughs> spit out kids. Who spit? <laughs> don't don't spit out children. <laughs> what the hell? We all spit. I'm a Nigga got bars, nigga. Damn it, though. Yeah. Which one of you niggas bars. killed Santa Claus? That's terrible. <laughs> Nigga. At, at, yeah. As you were watching the development of these artists when they were breaking, when they were coming out, who surprised you with their success? Who'd you think was not going to be as big as they were? Uh, shit, I'm not going to say Hammer because I knew that entertainment value was going to push him over the top. Um, he was shit. the first pop star. In yeah. I, let me see. Who didn't? Who I slept on? Yeah, like, no, no. Oh, like, nigga, if I tell you who I slept gonna say, on. Who's that? Who who I'm going to say. Go ahead. You want to know the one yeah. guy I slept on? Cool. That, that Mike Kaiser bought it to me, played the record. And I said, get the fuck out of here. We already got a dog. We don't need a... We had Snoop oh, Dogg. DMX. X. Really? Yes. Wow. Nah, Slept nah, like a baby. Now, nah, hold on. First nah. of all, the he played Get At Me, dog. Right? The do dun That was Get The Bozak. Yeah, it's Get The, the Bozak, yeah. Where I come from, you don't take a beat right. if a nigga used the beat. Right, right. So I was already... Fucked up behind that. That's one strike. Growling yeah. and barking. I'm the dog. I'm like, we got Snoop Dogg. Why do we right. need another fucking dog? Fuck out of here. So what happened was we had the Hot 97 Hot Shots. And we used to play other teams around. So them niggas the bust I asked when we first started. So I went and got niggas from the Rucker and put mm -hmm. them on the Hot 97 Hot Shot. We started killing niggas. Yeah. We go up to the Bronx yeah. and we're playing a team from the Bronx. I think we was up by four or six. Halftime come, the DJ jump on and play Get At Me, dog, and niggas <laughs> lost their mind. Ah, and I damn. said, you know what? I was dead ass wrong on that. Let me tell you the crazy shit. I was shit. wrong as a motherfucker Let me tell you the crazy shit X. about X. So I knew X from 1990. He had just got out of jail. And we were signed to the same production company. It was uh, double, double something. Whatever. It was bullshit. That's when Jack was managing. J the old nigga Jack with the Jerry Curl. Jack from, from the from strip club? No, 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 Jack. Oh. No, no, his name is, his name was Jack. He was an old nigga. Right. But that's when X was still doing spelling. Okay. And so he did a whole record. He was like, hey, yo, check this out. So he played, the whole record was him spelling. That's why I hated K-Solo. That No, that was him beefing with K-Solo. Okay. And here's the funny shit. People was like, yo, DMX dissed you. He said, that nigga K could suck my dick. I was like, no, he said K. He, yeah, K-Solo. Yeah. To this day, I get questions about that. But anyway. People, people ask you that still? To this, yeah. Somebody no, asked it's K-Solo. It's K-Solo. They, right? they, they, they were in I jail. Yeah. But now, yeah. Now they he, were in jail together. Right. And he, and he said stole his shit. K he stole his shit. Got out before him. And stole his, with his spelling shit. Yeah. And now, spellbound, the K-S-O-L-O. When I S P E L L yeah. very W E L L and, 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 and back then that's when DMX got it, got it from me, DMX from used X. to do wow. whole record spelling and here's the amazing shit this nigga played a record for me one day the whole record was spelling but somehow the shit rhymed and when I knew X was my nigga he came to me outside of the Lermitage in L A right before the Soul Trainer was he's like hey yo let me talk to you <laughs> I'm like because I knew niggas since 1990 he's like yeah. hey yo people be coming up to me they said. You know, I'm dissing you because I said, fuck K-Solo. And they, 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 they think I'm saying you suck my dick. You know, I fuck with you. I'm like, nigga, I already know. That's exactly how he talked. Yeah, he was like, right. hey, yeah, hey, he talked exactly yeah, how he did. Yeah, 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 exactly. Another yeah. nigga surprised the shit out of me, Ja Rule. He from my neighborhood. Okay. Word. Yeah, yeah Rule shocked the shit out of me. shocked me too. Explain that one though because Ja, I remember Ja came in with fire. Like, when they, when no, they he brought, came in, he came in with fire. They, but he came in like, we know first of all, living up is one of the greatest records He was ever. in the cash money clip. <laughs> right. He was in the cash yeah. money clip. Right. That record they put out really didn't do that great. Right. right. So Ja shocked the shit out of me. Irv did a great fucking job with Ja. Yeah. Shocked yeah. the shit out of me. Yeah, tell I know my Jeff. You know, Jeff to be on, you know, on the block getting it in. That's right. what we knew. Because Irv wanted Ja and, and Jay to do stuff together. Yeah, yeah. and we knew Cash Money Click. And, and right. X. And then it after Cash Money Click, after Big Black went to jail, they disbanded it, yeah. and they heard something special up at Def Jam and Ja Rule, the voice yeah. and everything. Nigga, we did so, me and Ja did so many records when he first got signed. Where's all of those records at? That's on what YouTube. I want to know. You know the Are shit they? we did, the print shit we did? Um, uh, Another Hole in Your Head? Life. That yeah. That's on YouTube. Everybody needs Yeah, that's okay. on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. That's right, because Prince said, yo, Sam. Yeah, Prince. Yo, let me tell you what Prince said. Prince won't let nobody say No, let no. me tell you what Prince said. No, I heard this on the phone myself. So we did the thug life, but together that. So Prince was like, um, he was like, yo, we want to sample this, blah, blah, blah. He was like, no. Nah. Asked Michael Jackson to sample his shit and hung up the fucking phone. Wow. I promise you. And I was wow. like, you know, Nancy Boy was supposed to be Vanity Six. Biggest Nancy Boy. 
Really? Wait, yeah. Who? Biggie's not you nasty big, you nasty. Oh, Biggie nasty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the so sample too. was supposed to be Vanity Six. Yeah, it was yeah, supposed boom, to be nasty boom, girl. Boom, it's right. supposed to be nasty yeah, girl. Yeah. And <laughs> Puff will tell you the story. You know who? No, I, I know that story. Hilarious. But he been niggas been trying to sample because Timbaland used to try to sample it. Niggas been trying to sample Nasty Girl for years, and what's the name had to remake it to do Nasty yeah. Girl. Yeah, yeah. That's because crazy. Prince Puff say went to a party and he had to wait around for Prince, and they took him in like some room, and it was dark, uh-huh. and the light came on, and Prince was sitting on the throne, and was like, "I'm gonna tell you." And right was like, "Fuck you." Yeah, like the yeah. answer is no, and I really don't think you're that talented. Yeah. Like, Enjoy the rest of the party. Yo, <laughs> Prince wasn't shit. No, Prince was an ancient. He was good nigga. to me. Right. He was always good to right, me. Right, 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 right. He think it was amazing yeah. to me. He I remember good. one time we went to, we went to Glam Slam. I was in L.A. This one we ran before Death Row, uh-huh. when Pac used to be with my nigga Stretch, God rest his soul, yes, sir. all the time in New York, right? We in L.A., Pac is with us, we in L.A. We decided that night to go to Glam Slam because Prince had a concert. Absolutely. You know, Prince had a club. Yeah, he used to never knew what he was going to yeah, yeah. But it used to be some bad bitches right. at Glam Slam. So we go to Glam Slam. Fuck that. We going to that. We go to Glam Slam, we chilling. All of a sudden, 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, this nigga come on stage and do a fucking like four concert. And do a whole concert. Yeah, yeah. 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 After the fucking show was over, we chilling at the bar. Big Chick come over. Remember Big Chick, the nigga with the white hair? Used to be, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, man. Hey, the boss want to see you. You Tupac and your man. And we go backstage and we kicking it with Prince. Mm. This nigga's knowledge, he knew Pac, he knew Pac's music. You know, nigga fuck with me. Right. So we was cool. So his knowledge of hip hop and music, period, was amazing. He was just seriously protective of his Of his art, shit, yeah. Which is understood. Because Warner Brothers didn't want to let him write right. and produce his own shit at right. first. So he was very protective of his art. It wasn't like he didn't like hip hop. He just was protective over his shit. He wanted and how his it was sh- used. He yeah. wanted his shit yeah. to live the way his shit he lived, the way it. he put it out. Absolutely. You know. And I often uh, ask the question when we talk about hip hop: Who is more important, the nigga that sampled it or the nigga that originally made it? Depends, it depends which song, song is better. It depends. depends. I don't think song it does depend on what song is better because I think the motherfucker that made it made it out of nothing. I would agree you with that. You taking something and you interpolating it, you right. changing it around. And there's a lot of that shit is dope. Right. But sometimes when you hear that original it's shit, like it's the creativity. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think I think it's because you can interpret some shit into and some, it, into something you better. Make something better. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So I, I always give props to because. Jimmy Page self up. I always oh. think that nigga was the man. No, the nigga Jimmy Page. You know I'm a Led Zeppelin fan. Yeah. So when Puff tried to do um, Come With Me yeah. for um, Godzilla, he was like, no, you can't sample my shit. I'm going to play it over, and it's going to have to say, featuring you. Puff Daddy. <laughs> that brother, them. That's yeah. Cashmere. Yeah. And he was, he was like, yeah, you're not going to sample Cashmere. It's, I'm going to play it over, and it's going to say, Puff Daddy, Featuring Yo, Jimmy, Jimmy Page. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Jimmy Page. Damn feature, right. Yeah. That very protective of but, but, but sometimes, but I'm not going to lie. Sometimes people that sample shit, it comes out better. And I'm, that's just progression. I think like, Otis, I think that's what Otis Redding's estate did, too, when they did Otis. Right. They had to put Jay-Z and Kanye West yeah. featuring Otis Redding. Yeah. But right. I think that they, you should do that for every song. I, agree. I agree. The song I agree. It's a homage. big part of your yeah. shit. I agree. I agree. Because now that's a teachable moment. Right. You teaching them, right? And that's right? not the right. first time that Kanye sampled Otis Redding. Oh yeah. Cause remember, in the, uh, what's the other shit he did? Um, Kanye sampled. Um, he sampled. Uh, what's the fuck? Ah, uh, goddamn it! I just heard it, and then I looked at Ed. Well, I tell you who the funniest nigga ever was sampled. Uh, cause you know, Warning is fucking Isaac Hayes. Right? Yeah. Isaac Hayes took 100 percent of the publishing. He's supposed to. He took all of them. Niggas don't They're know wild. how much of hip hop is Isaac Hayes. Yeah, all of them. Word. I took it all. I give me all that. What's the name? Is my shit? I'm all of it. But wait, it's so many. It's so many hip hop songs that's Isaac Hayes that niggas don't even know. I I I know. I yo dog. I sample. Excuse me. I didn't sample. I I had a song on my first album. No, no, I didn't take. Mm -hmm. All I had in the it was an interlude. And at the end, I was like, soon as I get home, soon as I get home, that nigga was like, yo, that's dope. I want. All the publishing from that and the song that comes after it. God like, damn! I'm like, nigga, all I said was, soon as I get home, yeah, so, damn right. he's like, I don't give a fuck. 
Wow. <laughs> That's my shit. Yeah, well, guess what? You changed he kept shit. his shit. Yeah, you motherfucker right. You changed his shit. Because yeah. it was just, it was one line in the interlude, yeah. but I respect that. Right. Yeah. But you I, don't, I don't, I, no, hell no. no. <laughs> I didn't have it. You right. took it off? Hell yeah, I took I it off. Like yeah. Fuck that. Nigga, yeah. he wanted that in the song after? That, everything. Yeah, you, you do that shit live show. He was like, I need to do a live show. I need to smack on the ass. Whoa, Kenneth. Yeah. But you couldn't get him on like, yeah, it's just an interpolation of. Yeah, He didn't care. He didn't care, wow. and I you respect know, that. Yeah, that motherfucker's also. I respect that. He was a, he was a motherfucking music okay, well, label take it, owner. Well, okay, well take his you know fucking team. No, take his side. Take his side. I'm not taking no side. Nah, you ain't shit for that. The nigga could have gave you as soon as I get home. Come on, could have. Come on, face. But he ain't have to. I can understand the music under it. All I can say. Yeah, I didn't even have the music. That nigga was like, nigga, I will fuck you up. Matter of fact, you got an email after doing this shit on this show today. Oh shit! You know what? No, I said that in Spanish. Spin your kid, okay? Spin your kid, okay? Right? He's so me, so cause I Yo, them motherfuckers don't play around with their problems. Yeah, man. That's and they all they got. And they ain't you supposed to. know. I mean, yeah. you know. That's it's... the shit that the catalog, those are the catalogs catalog that last forever. But I'm going to tell you something. That hurt Prince's legacy. Him being like that, and I'm going to tell you why. We did um, concerts, and I used to have a Michael Jackson set, and the whole crowd used to know all the songs. We were in Minneapolis on the day that Prince died. Remember this? And I did a Prince set. They didn't know them fucking songs. You know why? Because he was getting his shit pulled from YouTube. They didn't know them fucking songs. Oh, wow. Uh, and I'm like, he kind of un unknowingly. I think that probably hurt him worse than the sampling shit. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He fucked Pulling up. Pulling it off of the street. Yeah, he fucked, he fucked up his, his legacy because them niggas knew every Michael. I didn't even have to sing this shit. They knew them like shit. Prince ain't had no money. Like, nigga. Yo. You could take 100%. He was too protective. Yeah. yeah. He was too protective. And well, there, the there is a such there. thing. There is a such there thing. There is a such thing as being overprotective. You think so? Yeah, yeah. definitely. That's definitely. the that's the example. When I would do the Michael Jackson you know set. You know how many people didn't know that, that, that my man uh, Bobby Caldwell was a white guy? Nigga. Right. That shit pissed me off. Bobby right. Caldwell let niggas sample his shit. Go ahead, right. sample it. Yeah. I'm going to get my publishing off of it, and you're going to keep my song alive. alive. Absolutely. But remember, Stop <clears> the <throat> Sonic said, admitted, uh, uh, oh, something would have been oh, a day to God if we didn't sample, if we if we forgot, people would have forgotten some Somebody, shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Remember, uh, uh, James Brown was old until Eric and Rock. Yeah, he was like, I was so. Rappers bring back old R&B, yeah. and, if we, and if we did not, yeah. people would have forgotten. But that's yeah. right. So sometimes it's but good real shit. people right. take your shit. And, and I think that Prince hampered his legacy. Well, and that's I, why I ain't say when a nigga... But, Nigga, I was gonna do it for free. Right. My nigga Dan, my manager and business partner, was like, nah, we're gonna get something out of Nas and them. When Nas did yeah. King's Disease 2 and put me on the death on the end of Death Row 3, uh, -huh. uh um, yeah, uh, Death Row East, yeah, I was gonna say, hey, hey, nigga, go ahead, because right. that's me on the right. list. Right. It lives forever. Right. It lives forever. Right. It lives forever. Right. It lives forever. Right. But Dan said, let's get a little coin right. out. We, and they, they, gave us a, piece of check. they gave us a check, you know, right. and if I need and Nas guess who to do something for me. No, 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 not you. That's for your kids. Yeah, and they'll live on. Because I was gonna do that for him. <coughs> First of all, don't point at me. My mother ain't dead. <laughs> Old school shit. Y'all don't know about that. Game, on game album, and I said, Nah, let's get money for it. And Cage was like, Nah, just go ahead and let him, let him get it when, when he was calling. Because I, I fuck with the art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. still get a check out. No, I, I got yeah. you now. Yeah, but yeah. I, I bet Where you, the fuck was you at then? I bet your hit boy would charge you for it. He's gonna publish it anyway. <laughs> okay. Get publishing and a check. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. he was like, Now I need the check. I'll take the publishing. Because the publishing will go to my kid. The check, I'm gonna spend that shit. Right, right, right. I'm gonna drink it. I'm gonna buy cigarettes. Right, right, right. I'm gonna I'm I'm spend that shit right. on cigarettes. <laughs> That's true. Right. But the publishing that go to my kids. Right. Having this having this conversation, you know, makes me think about the business savvy and the progression of that over the course of hip hop. Because I'm sure that in the beginning there was no business savvy. People didn't. They were going to, doing it as they went. They were learning as they went. You know, you talk about all the stories that people talk about their labels and how they did this, that, and the third. Did you get a chance to watch the business savvy of these artists grow, or were you yeah, disappointed? Yeah, yeah, because went? hell yeah, because you know the labels, the boutique labels started popping up, and you started seeing the business grow. You 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 know you bear witness to a uh, bad boy and Death Row being hundred million dollar labels. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you bought, you bear witness to that right. shit. Then but I think, one, I think a, a, a big part of the problem came is not too soon after that, the culture died and the money became the most important thing. 
Uh-huh. And when, whenever you add a lot of money, you kill the culture. Right. You know what I mean? And for these young cats, yeah, I'm doing it for the culture. No, nigga, you're doing, you're doing it so it you can money. buy a Bugatti. Yeah. You're doing it so you can floss for these chicks. shit, that is the current culture. Yeah, you wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Did you see the that's bullshit? Not, that's not, not the hip-hop, hip-hop culture. culture. Did y'all see the bullshit from the other day? Um, what's his name? Uh, Big Scar. That oh, passed yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah. people got online. His sister, his father jumped on and said, "Not nah, yeah, but No, no, his brother and sister yeah. got on there saying Gucci didn't do this, and then Gucci's so, wife got on. But here's the best part: at the funeral, the brother that got on shot a video at his funeral. It's online. Like shot a hip hop video. Shot a video at his funeral. Man, that's terrible. They said uh, I sent it to you. They said my brother's video, my brother's funeral cost about sixty thousand. That little ten thousand dollars ain't do shit. Then why you take it? Well, shit, my you question see what I'm saying? Well, why'd you, why'd you, and then they said, the he didn't send no flowers, and then they sent the picture of the flowers. But, nigga. Why you guys ain't got to do shit? No, dog. It his, was 20 his brother, No, the brother shot a video at the funeral. That's, it's online. It's on the shade room. That ain't, ain't about culture no more. Yeah, yeah. That's when you arguing right. about, you supposed it's to It's about clout. You're supposed to say thank you. It's about clout. That's what you do. Yeah. Nobody owe you shit. Nobody owe you nothing. That's the hard part. You know? He wasn't old. He didn't owe Scar no money. Rest in peace. You know, but you're supposed to say thank you, and now it's all about what you didn't do or what you didn't give. It's about privilege, You know, we man. had dirty sneakers, nigga. Right. You know what I mean? Nigga drove, a uh, light drove her car in the video. You Thank know, you. She right. drove Thank her you. own car. Right. And I had to say box. Right. Or else a nigga wouldn't have turned on the radio. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> nigga, box. That's because none of these kids partied in the park. Exactly. Right. <laughs> they automatic. It automatic, automatic if they can catch they us. They had social media. Right. They have to go through the trenches they of ramen. They had social media. They have to go through ramen in a cipher. And they all think that you're supposed to start out with a chain. Nice. You're supposed to start right. out with a chain. Right. You're supposed to have money. They ain't go to Freak Deep 92. You're supposed to. <laughs> I didn't either. I didn't either because. I didn't. What? No, I love they Jesus. They pop Molly. They on Xanax. <laughs> yeah. But does that have anything to do with the rising level of exposure yes. of hip hop? Yeah. Because and they got them. social media. And, yeah. right. it's and, and, and YouTube That's and not. streaming. These motherfuckers with a million followers, you ain't heard one album from them yet. Nah, I would, God, and they I sell out arenas. <laughs> if I had social media, yeah. we'd have been out of here. I'd be <laughs> Elon Musk <laughs> right now. I'd be Elon. I'm snowing coke with Rick Day. Fuck out of here. Social media? 89? That's crazy. Bloody. Exactly. I'm eating. Can you imagine how many followers a nigga like me that I have? Man, listen, I'm already knowing. 175 million. <laughs> yeah, uh, let counting. me talk to y'all over there at Lamborghini. Right, right, right. I'm going to pull up in front of your own TV raps with this shit. They're going to shoot it. Wait to snitch. Exactly. Nigga be like, yo, I'm the only niggas getting followed by Lamborghini, nigga. Right, right, right. That's just crazy. So you though. watch the progression of everything. You watch the progression of the money yeah. really started coming into play around, you know, what is it, 94, 95. You watch it yeah, get big bigger. And and big and it went from Wu-Tang. Really? So wait. Because so- Wu-Tang was grimy. And then it, it went yeah. to the, the the bling era, quote unquote, yeah, right. until right. 99, 2000 with cash, and and cash money and all that. Yeah, With cash money, that was they 99, 2000. Right. Yeah. yeah, and Master P and them kept it going right. with the tank shit. Yeah, that's what I'm that. saying. Yeah. And yeah. Jay-Z and them took it to a whole new level with yeah, shit. And Rockefeller, they just kept yeah. it going. They Nick, kept I going. got a better one. Remember when it was okay if you had a 190 Benz? Yeah. I, until oh my Biggie God, and came out. I'm like, nigga. Right. Who bought up this Bentley shit, nigga? Exactly. I had a 190. I was the shit. You remember Jay was talking about Lexuses. He had a GS. And shit yeah. like that. And then that nigga went from there to... Dog. What's the difference between a 4.0 and a 4.6? Yeah. Right. 40,000, nigga. Cocksucker. And remember Kareem the, Baseball. Yeah, that was his Yeah, well, Kareem had that money. But let me tell you the bullshit. We ain't gonna bullshit. talk about let that because it's shit. Right. But let me tell you something, money. <laughs> a 190E, a Saab 900, a Volvo. Oh, a Jetta, nigga. A Jetta. Light nigga. had the Jetta. A Jetta, nigga. The Jetta was hot. With the kick plate. With, yeah. If you had a Jetta with the kick plate on yeah. the door, especially had a Jetta. You said exactly. Jetta, you. right? Puff said, I got, cover. Nigga, Puff said, I got a Benz that I ain't even drove yet. Right. Like, you Who know when they that? got fucked up? When niggas started that? mentioning the word Bentley and Rolls Royce. Yes. yes. Yeah. I remember, let me tell you the private first, jet. Nigga, right, the crazy. first Rolls Royce I ever saw, I was in Times Square and I had just came out. Um, it wasn't a hip factory. I came from uh, the Diamond District. I'm on Times Square. I see a white thing. I didn't know what the fuck it was. It was Bobby Brown driving Whitney Houston's Rolls Royce. Damn. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Next thing you know, everybody had a Rolls yeah, Royce. And if they yeah. didn't, they was talking about it. Right. Yeah. And now you can have, nigga, you can have a 190. Right. It was so bad, Mercedes stopped making fucking yeah, 190s. Yeah, 
The Lexus LX four and a half bulletproof yeah. glass tent. Yeah. And now you can you Alexa can't even have high. that after yeah. a while. But wait, yeah. but but yeah, hold on. Did right. you see how quick they graduate? You can't even have a Lexus after right. that. Yeah. Then the, then the BMWs was hot to fucking death. Yeah. You know the seven forty. Seven forty. I was crazy. Yeah. And then and I should have seen that happen. Eight hundred. Oh, yeah. Eight hundred. They ain't made them yet. yet. That's they right. They ain't made them yet. So shit was crazy, man. It just the progression of the shit just went from one level. To the next level, to the next level, to you see a nigga like Lil Wayne with a half a million dollar car. And then right, niggas right. got fucking Lamborghinis. Right. Shit, a two million dollar car. Nah, well, a lot Bugattis. of niggas got kicks. Yeah. A lot of oh, niggas yeah. got them kicks. Oh, yeah. These niggas be having a Bugatti yeah, shit. Them. Look the same, but it ain't the same. Right. Right. Nigga, they had that shit on Miami Vice, nigga. Yeah. 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 Them kick Lamborghinis. The Corvette. Yeah. The, the yeah. Corvette with the Ferrari. I know. The Corvette was his shit. Yeah. Nigga, I like Trans Ams. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but you still like that shit. I do too. I still like old school. Yeah, but you want the one with the Firebird on the hood. Okay. The T top. So to answer your question, yeah, we've seen the transition of motherfuckers making money. Just go back and look at the old videos, old hip hop videos. Nobody sneakers match their outfit. Right. We wore what the fuck we had in the closet. Yeah, but damn, right? Nigga if you shit got didn't fit. We went to <laughs> Dapper Dan. We didn't have real Gucci. No. Nah. Right. Mm -mm. And then it got to a point where you had to have real Gucci. Yeah. Right. Niggas are talking Rolexes. We watch wearing swatch watches. You right. Know, like, yeah. With the bands. Yeah. It's yeah. the Benetton. Remember the Benetton phase? The Benetton oh. phase was crazy. But you know, Shit. the the focus of the braggadocio changes. And that's when Okay. Since you're using big words, Come on, I'm man. gonna take it as disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> now he ain't lying. He ain't lying. Oh, listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. The focus of what you're bragging about changes, right? Yeah. It, it goes from, you know, bragging I'm about I'm the best MC. Right, it goes right. from that. To then huh? it goes to I got the chicks, then it goes to you know uh, the the jeans and the jacket. Then it is, it, pro it progresses and you can you can you can indicate times in which that happened. Yeah. And as that happened, the shit that became relevant to the people listening changes. Wow. So now the coasting that you you get from the fans is based off different stuff. So now everybody starts to keep doing this because that's what they feel like it takes for them to still have that respect and admiration. Right. And you can watch it as it happens. But I'm going to tell you some shit money. that I noticed. I'm going to tell you some shit that I noticed. <laughs> money. Money. Street shit. Back in the right, talking about crack no, and I'm going to tell you some shit that I noticed and I think this is destructive. <laughs> In 88, 87, 88, that's when, like, NWA, and it was like, okay, this is the CNN of the streets. It was right, NWA, right. Public Enemy, and then people would, Paris okay, one. yeah, this is the CNN of the streets. Right. And then, once the gang culture took over in New York and everywhere else, it's like, it flipped around. It's like the, the streets became hip-hop, and it became destructive. Yeah, right. Because, because hip-hop used to be constructive. People made hip hop, and I, I was talking about this. Um, Bambada and them made hip hop to stop being the black spades and, yeah. and to unite shit. And I'm gonna just say this: these white people flipped it around and used it against us to to make it destructive for okay. us. And, they, and now they it. they have, yeah that did it too. Crack did it. No no no. But when N.W.A. and Public Enemy was out, crack was in his heyday. So it's not that. Well, That's I right. Your your base. I would agree. It's not definitely because crack. No, it crack, wasn't L.A. Yeah, crack was in his heyday when Public Enemy, Karis One, okay. all that shit was out. My man, Daddy, oh, what said yeah, to me? Yeah, you know, his brother who stayed yeah, all day. But in his that's what I'm saying. That night what he went I, to sleep. What I think is that the powers that be flipped it around and turned. The culprit used to jam and rock the mic. Now he sneak the beats to hit the pipe. Thank you. And walk around to find a place where they rock to a different kind of come on, That was some. Real shit. Yeah. But here's I mean, the shit. I think that the powers that be, I think the, the, money I think the powers that be flipped no. it around. Right. That it, it took it from something positive it's and it made it back into something negative. And now we're at the point where. Then was everybody a drug dealer? It's a negative influence. It was everybody's a drug dealer. It was no, no, no. Everybody was a drug dealer. Yeah, now everybody's right. a drug user. Right. right. See, See not when Nas evolution. came out, Nas painted the picture of what was going on in Queensbridge. As he saw it, right, right. His songs were about New York state of mind, and oh. you know what he saw in Queensbridge. Mm -hmm. By the time Big came out, now think about this. This is real shit. Big was exactly like Nas when he first came out. Oh. Give me the loot, give me the loot. I'ma stick you right. up. Machine yep. gun rap, yeah, slanging on all the of that. Right. Oh, yeah, the baby rings. Right, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That just that tells was, us that you ain't shit. And then, and then, and then the double voice shit. 
that he oh, took yeah, and put on his crazy. records was Slick Rick. Right. That yeah, was yeah, MC sure was. Ricky yeah, D, right? right? That was and MC Snoop Ricky D. did the same shit. Right. But think about it. He was exactly like Nas. Right. Right? With the army jackets, the bandanas. Mm-hmm. Nas and them was doing all that shit in Queensbridge. Mm-hmm. Puff looked at it and said, we got to be a step above. So I'm going to put you in the Versace shirts and the glasses. You're a boss. Nas is a hand-to-hand street worker. Wow. That's what Mob Deep and all of them niggas yeah, were. Right, yeah. And Nori and Tragedy. Right. We're talking about well, it from... Peasants. Right. Everybody right. Else. Now yeah. you're a brick mover. Right. You're a bricklayer. And then Jay-Z adapted to what he saw Big do. Absolutely. You know, we can't be here. Right. We move bricks. I'm, you know, right. y'all niggas on the Peter Pan bus. I got right. this one. And <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why I love Puck. Right. Yeah, Puck is a genius He, he that saw shit. that. Yeah, he saw that. He's a yeah. genius of that shit. He saw it. Yeah, Cause niggas, niggas, niggas bit off a nine shit, guy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Manicures on board, yeah. Your place. Who's <laughs> yeah. talking about that? Exactly. Right. No, but, right. but, okay, no okay, he got, he got that from me. <laughs> <laughs> but Jay them, Jay them went a step uh, up, right? Than from what Nas and them was doing, right? Because who you know, the skinny I, nigga on the boat? Yeah, I'm, I'm sneaking Uzis on the island in my army <laughs> jacket <laughs> lining, right? Hit the earth like a common invasion. Nas is like an Afrocentric Afro-centric Asian, Asian, half man, man half, half amazing. amazing. Yo, so yeah. they had to go. Nas was, they couldn't Nas fuck with him on that shit. level. Right, right. They couldn't fuck with Mob Deep. Right. Not the first album. Right. Not Juvenile Hell. Right. But that, that next that, shit, when Mob Deep and them came right back out, they know they couldn't fuck with them. And then you have whoa, 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 whoa. Now right. you have some queen shit. Who couldn't fuck? Who wait, excuse me. Who couldn't fuck with? Who couldn't fuck with that? They knew image wise they couldn't oh, okay. be on the same right, level. Right, right, right. No, I didn't talk, no, I'm yeah, not I talking about rhyming stuff. Okay, okay, no. okay. I'm pressure. talking about the pressure of niggas got the streets on that level of yeah, the streets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so we right. have to go above, above that. that. Right. So I gotta get Versace shirts and Versace glasses for big, and I gotta make big look like even a though they don't ball. make Versace in big size. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's well. Thank you, five thousand one flavor. Yeah, all day. You know what I'm saying? My man guy in Troy. My nigga Troy. My nigga Troy. They had to elevate. Biggie and Jay to another level. And then shit started getting too cute. Right. Because you saw Jay in the sunshine. You best to be my sunshine. They got a suit on. Biggie's wearing suits. Niggas is wearing suits. Yeah, that but Mob terrible. Deep and them had already came out. Right. And Nas mm-hmm. and them had came out. Then Nas put a suit on. Yes, it he did. became Escobar. Right. Right. And niggas was raising their game. What happened? A nigga from Yonkers by the name of DMX. Hey, yo, bitch. Bring it back Bring down. it back <laughs> to this grimy right. steel shit. Right. That's what happened. Because it always it, goes full it circle. It always goes full circle. Which means so it's going to come back. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to come oh, back. They still sticking. Think of kids are still out. They exactly. Still so think about it. The locks would sign the bad boys. They was, if you think we jiggy. That right. wasn't the locks. No, they were the warlocks before They're the that. They were the warlocks. Them niggas was grimy ass no. niggas. I knew them niggas since they were 13, 14. <laughs> right. And I remember when niggas was like, yo, it was Kiss in the booth. And niggas was like, yo, he was rhyming. I can't do it because I'm not a rapper. Yeah. And the nigga was rhyming. He was like, yo, just say some shit. And Styles was, and Sheik was just saying some shit. And he was run, like KRS one used to do. Right. So he naming some shit. Like he was like, tell me, what, tell me what's gonna happen when you get on. He's like, when I get on, blah blah blah. I'm like, yo, these niggas is incredible. Right. I knew them since they was kids. Yeah. So that's you know that's where you see hip hop go to where it was going. It got too pretty. X had to bring the shit back, and then you know the West Coast niggas was doing their thing. They've given you a perspective of Compton that we didn't know about that we had no idea about you know Star Wars IC was 6 in the morning absolutely one of the most incredible and important records for the West Coast yeah that gave you that gave because you had Rodney O and Joe Cooley you had other niggas out there but they wasn't giving you what street shit street right and I I am a nightmare walking psychopath talking yeah yeah nigga (laughs) so let me ask you this okay so you guys are still on the air when the G-Funk era starts in 93 92 93 right so and Ooh, you know, that chronic being, album, nigga. Being, but being, but being, nigga, that being, chronic album. That was, the first one was history. Yeah, nigga. You being know, what? The that, NWA. So being New York based, right? Being, being. We love the, 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 the ground, the ground, the face. We love. Based. Ain't no way in hell we ain't love Drake. Okay, we knew them it. niggas. We knew them niggas from NWA. I, right. Remember, the we East covered them. <laughs> so here was my thing. Here was my thing about that. Now, here's my thing about that. When the G Funk love us. Come on. <laughs> I don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> when the, G, the thing about me, Yo, he when was faster than the motherfucker when he did that when shit. When the G-Funk era nigga. started. Source of but Hold yeah, up. I fucked up that nigga. God damn. When the G-Funk era started, right? Y'all don't tell us what I to was do. Not, Wait, I wasn't in high school yet. 
And I'm from Denver, Colorado, right? Right. And so for, for us, it was, we got it from both. You know, but I was I was way more heavy with you know tribe and and that era. You know, all that right. the, everything in the East Coast was was all about me. I wasn't really yeah, I wasn't really messing with. You want to talk about uh, what they say? Uh, relationship goals? Shit, daylight. Them niggas ain't never, never broke, broke, never up. broke, never up. broke up. up. Never broke up. So the thing about it, what that I always wondered is <laughs> when that era up. starts, right? You know, people that are that are now fans of of lyricism like myself was. I didn't really accept that era until. What's my name came out? Well, we we did because we was already fucking with um with Dre and Snoop. Okay, and easy from the NWA. Okay, game. so y'all was so the NWA era and all that was was highly respected. Yeah, even straight in, out okay. of Compton. Yeah, that nigga for life. That nigga for life album is on oh, okay. okay. piece bananas. Of and then remember, Cube came so to New York out. and got with the Bomb Squad to do America's remember Most. Remember when you right. remember, okay. was you at the show at the Apollo? Yeah, I was remember there. they rushed the stage yeah. when Kooji Rap was up there yep. and he got up there and he had the ball head. He was like. He came out with baseball bats. Was like, come on, rush the stage tonight. Remember yeah. that shit? That shit was gangster. Yeah. So we already have respect yeah. for them niggas, at Cube and NWA and Easy and them from straight out of Compton. Right. Right. But Ice Cube was the first nigga that we respected because I remember I used to blast NWA and all my niggas. Yo, stop playing this country shit. Right. But when they Ice Cube came, shit, really? yeah, they yeah. was mad, and I used to get pulled over. Kids don't try this at home. They'd be like, the police be like, hey, turn that down, and I turn it up like. Fuck the police! Fuck Absolutely. the police! That fuck them! crazy. I, I used to get beat up by and the police. Remember they dropped. I got my Remember they dropped the nigga yeah, out of oh, Texas. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Remember they gave <laughs> us. They gave us DOC. And that, that album was. Dope. What do you talk it? about DOC? It's and DOC had he not he had he does he not yeah. get this accident? There's no NWA without DOC. I feel like yeah, he's. Game was crazy. Yeah. yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And, and when he goes, blueprint. yeah, when he goes yeah. through what he goes through, like the death that, row yeah. without DOC. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's thank true you. Too. That's, that's real. Yeah, Ain't no death row without Ren, DOC. Ren, one of the best one-two punches in hip hop history is Ice Cube and Rent. Absolutely. You know, and DOC. Yeah. Don't leave DOC out of that. That's no, a triad. I'm talking about on in, in the right, NWA. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, that's yeah. all they had. Uh, easy ain't even want to rap. So. Right. Right. Not a right, right. hand because I'm the hand right. itself every time. I pull an AK off the shelf. <laughs> Nigga, <laughs> that that was maximum, that. and that's law. R.E.S. Red, but I'm wrong. See, because I'm a motherfucking villain. I don't want to fuck one of you niggas up. That's all K-Day. When you niggas meet me outside. That 1580 K-Day. That was my shit. Take your place without a clue. And once you're on the scope, your ass is through. Look, you might. Take, take it, it as a trip, trip but, but a nigga like Red is on the gangsta tip straight, straight out of Compton. Compton. <laughs> nigga, oh, I'm about to kill one of you niggas. See, see, I promise see. you. Start on that side. <laughs> yeah, <sir. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just, you know, these are the moments that you got to talk about as we talk about 50 years of hip-hop. In case you're just joining us, the Kickback Podcast, Gerard J, Case, Cole Parker, special guest, Ed Lover. Hello. And the thing about it is we are celebrating. Special other guest, MC Rand. Okay, we are not. We're celebrating. <laughs> we're celebrating not only your birthday, but we're celebrating a movement. And we're celebrating progress, and everybody. And we're celebrating Ed Lover, and we're celebrating your birthday. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> birthday. But yeah, you don't turn niggas, seventy-one every time. Every, every. Only light skin niggas' birthday is the same day that Lionel Richie dropped all night long. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stop talking to me. <laughs> Say nothing else. That's every yeah. light skinned nigga. Yo, yo. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Mary, too. Mary J. Blige birthday yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Mary. Yes. Yes. Happy birthday, Mary. Okay. Happy birthday, Mary. All right, I didn't know yeah. that. Let's keep All right, moving. happy birthday, yeah. Mary. All right. Move All, move All right. Share my world. Move move All right. Move move All right. Yeah. Good just, birthday, shout out. Happy birthday, Mary. I think that it's important for people that listen, people that are that are in, that are involved with us right now, it's important for them to hear the stories that they didn't see on the television. You know what I'm saying? Or they didn't hear on the radio. And so when you talk about the inner workings of how this whole situation happened you gotta let people know the stuff that they weren't privy to you know what I mean we could sit all day long and talk about things that we all know that are obvious but the reason I keep trying to engage these different situations is because they have no idea about these things that we're talking about they don't know right. about how the business went they don't they know they don't about know that motherfucking Luke is the most important nigga to ever come out to say. thank you I'll okay now talk you. about that I'm gonna tell you why please do because Congress. everybody else Okay, P can tell you I used to sell records out the trunk of my car, and then he went up to California for a minute and was doing his thing, right? Uh -huh. um, cash Money, you know, they had a record deal with somebody, even though they got the major chunk of the money, but that was all set up by Puff and with Death Row and everybody else like that did, right? Luke was the first all independent one stop shopping record label I ever saw. 
Luke really? Was a total independent. Them niggas wasn't independent. Right. Luke was independent. You know what independent means? There's no middleman between you and your money. Right. Luke printed the records, recorded the records, sold them. Had <laughs> trucks that would take the records to the store. Yeah. He had and, four stores of his own. And he had yeah. four stores of his own. And his money came from the stores straight back to him. Yeah. No, Puff didn't do that shit. Uh, Irve do that shit. Right. Oh, that's gangster. None of them niggas did it. That's gangster. Luke. Is that nigga in the South? Okay. And one of the I'm most generous niggas with the pussy I've ever met in my life. Salute to well, I wouldn't know about that. Shit. I would, <laughs> Good. I would too. It was a, <laughs> Luke is the reason why Boy, we have parental advisory I'm status. About, I'm about to post my picture, me and Luke. He took tomorrow. that shit to the top. They wouldn't let us play a lot of Luke videos. Right. right? And we right. wanted to play them too. We used to play Move Something Like a Mom. I oh. met this girl just <laughs> walking down the street <laughs> saying, <laughs> Do I did it, did it, dumb, did it, do Look good, look good, look fine, look fine. She was slick, was slick. She Oh, I'm about to do that. They, had, bro, they had everything self contained, bro. Yeah. Everything. I yeah, never I never seen that shit before. Has anybody gangster. done that since? Like I don't who probably like too short. You, you think nah, no, too, too short, too short no signed the job. Right. No, I'm saying in the beginning. But, he, no, but he was selling records out the trunk. Right. Yeah, that's he wasn't selling about. records in the store. Right. Okay. Luke uh, was you. selling records in so record what about store. Forty Water. Forty wasn't even doing that either. Forty nah. had the mixtapes out right. and shit like okay. that. But okay. I'm talking about a nigga that's printing twelve inch records, mm-hmm. albums, and sending them shits to the store with his own and trucks. All the money, right. all the money was coming right back. That's gangster. That's wow. He had salespeople. He was his yeah, distribution. Staff. Yeah, he was fucking Motown. Yeah, he was on distribution. Wow. He was Motown. Luke Gordy. Luke Gordy. Oh, my nigga. <laughs> See, I, I didn't know. I thought that Luke was Uncle affiliated Luke. With, with, a, with a parent he company, too. He was not mm. under no fucking major to And that nigga went to again. Congress and made it okay for yeah. you niggas to yeah. say what you want to yeah. say. That's right. right. Yeah. And he sued. And he was the Supreme Court. And he won. Wait, and won. Hold and up. Took he beat the everybody. first lady, nigga. Took yeah. an L which for one, Hold up. Which one of you niggas beat the first lady? Nobody. Obama, Nobody. Obama did, but that's another conversation. Yeah, but no, no. But yeah, he had a condom on. He had a condom on. That's cool. That nigga's a head of condom on. He had a condom on. Told that ass something in the White House. But he was married to it. He was married to it. Kill him, huh? I'm telling you. Kill him, Michelle, every chance he got. Why would he? Yeah, but did he go on tip No, I don't know about that. Okay, my nigga. But let me tell you something. Luke was a dude. You can tip Luke was able to understand how to get to Program directors before anybody else. Before Easy and the Wet Wild Pool Party, right? Luke had debauchery on lock. Right. Man, listen. Yeah, he had that on lock. I we go down that. there to do. We go down there to shoot a week of your TV rides with Luke and the two live crew. We show up in the airport. You could show half of it. And there, and, and there is a limousine for me, a limousine for Dre, a limousine for T, and a limousine for Ted. Four separate limousines at the airport. Full I of get, I get <laughs> there's two. Yes, sir. There's I already two know. Two in each limousine. So Luke told us to take care of you. So I'm getting my knocks, my boots blown off <laughs> on the way to the hotel. I get out the car. We all adjusting our clothes, <laughs> stepping out the car. I they get out the car. No, Luke said we we with y'all for the whole weekend. I love this country. That's how Luke set it out. For I love what? this country. Yeah, we yours for the whole weekend. That's amazing. We going where y'all go. We doing what y'all do. I've had that before. After I my love bad, it. After my bad as hell, too. Yeah, like, absolutely. Ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Name is, it's called Luke. Yeah. Luke dances, Luke. Man. Wait, hold up. Okay, like, let me tell you some So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I remember when Luke had a radio show. I forgot the radio station in Miami. Well, you saw the, the recent little differences between Luke and Fat Joe, right? Mm-hmm. No, because Fat Joe said he put on Khaled. Oh, he I saw on, that. Yeah, yeah. Luke put them niggas on. Yeah, right. I'm sure. Trick Daddy. Yeah, right, all that. Those oh, wait. Luke's niggas. So hold on, when Luke, Luke had his... introduced me to Khaled. Remember when Luke used to do the DVDs? Mm. You look at one of them Luke DVDs, it's me and Luke, and we're in this crib, and everybody's in there fucking, and me and Luke trying to sneak in everybody's room to see what's going on, and Khaled is there, and Khaled's on camera, and he's pushing Khaled out. And the he way. was like another two. And, and Khaled was selling fucking bootleg cell phones at the time. Wow. wow. Luke put that You know what? He looked like a bootleg cell phone. He nigga. was. Yeah. He looked... I, I give you one. I give you. We the best, who? <laughs> we. No, wow. we second best. We give no, you. We give it. you four. You have, you have, you have service. Love but wait, no let me doubt. tell you funny shit. So when Luke had his radio show, I'm there doing an interview, and Luke is interviewing me, and these two chicks come in, and they start doing mouth stuff, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna name my new album Mouth Stuff. Mouth Stuff, right on. I didn't, and I regret it to this day. I still might do it. But I'm sitting there, they interview, he's interviewing me, and they just start 
Yeah, yeah, nigga. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> do what? Playing the mouth for you. Yeah, yeah. son. Word to hip hop, baby. That's what it's all about. And that's man. how Luke used to throw these parties. Right. At Jack the Rapper, at the BRE, and all the program directors. Right. Because you talking about the know, '80s. I'm talking about '96. I'm talking about no. I'm talking about, no. I'm talking about no. the '90s. Yes. And and everybody knew that the fucking Luke was going to have all the strippers and. The fun times. Nigga, remember Jack the Rapper? Jack the Rapper was incredible. Oh, man. Jack the Rapper was incredible. Say less. Say less. But Say that's less. another thing about today's hip-hop. They don't have to go through the trenches. Right. right. Like, if you had There's no record, gatekeepers. There's, there's no, no gatekeepers. Yeah, you had to go through Jack the Rapper and BRE. That's why you have and, 50 Tyson. Right. And niggas like that. But thank God for it because now, you know, they don't really need radio anymore. No, right. they don't. Yeah, yeah but that, yeah. that also means that a lot of bullshit gets through. Well, I mean, well but it's bu- it's based off your opinion of people bullshit. Like what you know what I mean? Like, okay, my opinion. <laughs> fuck you. Like what, fuck you. No, no, I'm not saying Who's I don't next? agree. Who's next? I'm, just, I'm not hey, saying like, I don't agree. I'm saying from a listener perspective, you got to think. You got to you, you got to keep yourself grounded to. They a point. like what they're trained to. There like. you go. Yeah. They like what they trained to like. And there was a day, there was a time, Ed will attest to this, where we as radio personalities, we trained them what to like. Yeah, that's right. how it was. And what I'm saying is that time. That is, time is that gone. time is past. That's what I'm saying. That time is gone because there were gatekeepers. Yeah, you had to you had to hone your craft. You couldn't just. Be a motherfucker in your living room, Ooh, right? And just saying any old stupid shit. With pro and tools and all that shit, I can sing now, nigga. That's what I'm saying. I couldn't sing with with Case and them niggas. But, right and that's now. what I'm saying. Yeah. And with that's Joe what I'm saying. With Donnell Jones, yeah, like, them niggas can sing. Yeah, I, you go to Tyrese. Yeah, them niggas can sing. You couldn't just come up and say you're a singer, right? Drake sing now. You know, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> Drake sings. Well, Drake now. is out <laughs> but I'm just saying, saying he's saying yeah yeah you know but he's LL, yeah. he's LL L2. times 2.0 yeah. for sure 2.0 LL yeah no you know 3.0 I mean? at this point yeah shit right actually but, he's LL times but he Kanye went through times everything. he went through everything that a nigga that's gonna be a nigga he was, he's through. one of the last niggas that had right. to go through the gatekeepers yeah he went through yeah and he came through cause he came out around the time when Wayne and it was popping and right. we don't know Wayne is dope right yeah. right. So and we like her and uh but he went through everything he went through the fact that chicks love him. He went through the fact that dudes want to be him, and then niggas tested him, and he won. Yeah, right. dig that. That's niggas it. That's what made everything won. happen. Yeah. That sh- was a surprise for me in hip hop. Yeah, because Drake Mills. Mills? No, Meek Mills' comeback was a surprise. I thought Drake. Bought. Yeah, I thought he was over. I thought. I thought he was over. I thought he was over. Yeah. But the nigga came out to dreaming nightmares and that record. Nigga, because I thought one record. You know what I thought? I thought he fell victim to Jack the Ripper. Yeah. King Hercules. Yeah. Me too. I'm like, he's over. And when he came back, I'm like, wow, yeah. y'all fuck with him still? Mm. Yeah, he came back. What happened to King big Hercules? Up, big up to me. Yeah. yeah. Big up to Meek for that. Jack, I was thinking the same thing. Jack, I was like Meek. I remember I told Meek one time, I said, oh, you got it, man. You got these kids listening to you. And I love the, his, uh, the way he's evolving. And I love that he's about different things that have to do with you know, um, prison reform oh. and all the shit that, yeah, Meek, like that. that yeah. Meek is doing. I like it because you have a responsibility when you have young motherfuckers listening. So but also, as a joke, I do think that Meek sound like he's, when he rhymes, he sound like he's trying to explain something to a deaf nigga. <laughs> I do think that on some level. But I fuck with, I, I fuck, I fuck with me. Hey, fella. Welcome to my party. What up, yo? Party. I like Meek, man. So yeah, I, yeah. after we get ready to wrap up, man, what, what does hip hop need in the next 10 years? It's just going to get bigger and better. And yeah. the real spitters are, lo- are slowly coming to the forefront thanks to niggas like my nigga J. Cole. Yeah. You know, thanks to Rhapsody. Yes. Thanks to Remy Ma, who's still fucking Still fuego. killing it. Killing. Absolutely. Thanks to all of the real spitters. Right. It's, it's never going nowhere. It's so you're not going to mention me? Because I spit. No, you can't spit for sure. Damn. Right. There's okay. always going to be a balance in hip hop oh. where you're going to have what's popular versus what's really, really good. Right, Kendrick Lamar is another classic example of a, a young spitter, and everybody over there in his camp spits fire. Mm-hmm. Right, so there's always going to be niggas that's going to make good records versus niggas that could just spit fire. So when everybody talk about their top ten, they normally talk about their top fifty or top hundred people that made great records. Right, and and you leave Black Thought out. How fucking dare you? Right. You know, Pat Poose ain't never had an amazing record. Right, but but Pat sick. Poose can rhyme his motherfucking Yeah, yeah I'm going to leave him out. Yeah. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to leave him out. That nigga yeah. can rhyme. Yeah. No, I, I got you, but I'm going to leave him out. I am I'm gonna Nino leave Man. I'm going to leave him out. Nino from home. That I nigga. I just let the nigga hear him earlier today. Yeah. Well, but Nino I'm Man? Gonna, yeah, I'm going to leave Nino nasty, right? I know he's from Wagner. Yeah, see? So you're not going to talk about my rhyme? I spit I spit. Nigga, Dylon, Dylon, Dylon. And then me. So you're always going to see that song. 
I'm not worried because niggas that really spit fire is always going to be there. There's right. another, there's little young niggas that I see right now that spit fire. Here's the problem when I have with hip hop. And it's not really hip hop in general. It's New York. Y'all are taking this drill rap gang shit too far and y'all killing each other. Yeah. Oh. Right? Whenever you make a dance about a nigga that got stabbed up that was 14 years old, y'all taking this shit too far. Oh, they Damn. did that? You're taking it Yeah, far. that's fucked up. Yeah. Yes. Damn. Nigga the, shit the, for real. There's a dance do. when the nigga was doing do. this. Did the nigga do? Yeah, I forgot what yeah, the name of the dance up. was, but the kids don't even really know what it's all about. Yeah, that's fucked up. You yeah. know, y'all taking this shit too far. Cause that's chicks not what it's. That's chicks. not what it was for. No, nah, that's not what we about. That's fucked up. You know, and and it's the drill rap that y'all doing it, and it's too much beef going on in our city. We didn't do gangs. Right. We got money since the seventies. Oh. The only gang was yeah. the niggas that was getting money. You can't sell over here, nigga. Murder. Them. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. I don't know real. This is a drug gang. Right, no, right. these niggas is a gang. No, gang. No, no, no. Right. I got a, I got a better one for you. That's there was there problem. was a time when we set the trend, and now we're following other right. people. I want them to stop that. I want them to understand that life is beautiful, and if you're a hip hop artist, you can do shit. You know, you can still. There's still dope artists coming from all over this fucking country. Mm -hmm. Niggas forget a boogie with the hoodie is from the Bronx. Yeah, right. yeah. Niggas forget. I thought he's from Queens. Nah, he's, he's in the Bronx. From the Bronx. You niggas from, from Hybrids. Niggas forget. Okay. Five year foreign and them niggas. Them are New York niggas. You know what I mean? So hip hop. What we did for hip hop was open it up universally or worldwide for everybody. And now we're seeing it, and we're loving it, and I respect it. You know, rest in peace to take off. That shit hit me right. like a ton of bricks. When me I met, too, me too. When I met them niggas, they was the most respectful <laughs> young niggas I ever and them met. And them niggas was dope. Nipsey knew my whole history. Them niggas, knew, them niggas was wearing your TV raps jackets. Yeah. When I met them, they had their jackets on. And I was working for uh, Radio 1. Yeah. They ran in my studio. Look, OG, we got our your TV raps jackets. Respectful right. motherfuckers. But this game is so fucked up and everybody's so much for clout that I advise all of you young dudes that's making this money, yep. be wary of where you go, be wary of who you fuck with, be wary of what you put on social media. Because these, and remember who you are. Right. Remember who you are. And if you need if you're multi, guards, let me know. If you're a multi-millionaire like that, you ain't got to Go to the casino to if you want to gamble. Right. Right. Or get you a hotel room suite. And make sure you got security there. Just niggas security. popping off on how they get there. Make sure everybody gets patted down and the select right. sure. niggas for come sure. in and bust these niggas for their ass. Right. Let it be a fight. You know, I made, I made the mistake of gambling with niggas right. in Brooklyn one night. Niggas right. shooting dice. I was like, oh, let me get these niggas real quick. Right, right, right. I got all them niggas. I had to run in my car that night. I don't right. forget that <laughs> shit. But that was my mistake. You learn from your mistakes. So right. hopefully we all learn. And in two months from now, and oh yeah, rest in peace, gangsta boo. Yeah. And yeah, three sure. months from God. now, we're not talking about another twenty-five-year-old <laughs> hip hop prominent right. hip hop artist getting killed. Yeah. That's now, my look, hope. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Now let me tell you, niggas don't know this. I, I never tell you this. Please don't tell me you used to date gangsta boo. No, 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 no. I didn't date her, but I'm leaving. No, no. Let me tell you some shit. Let me tell you. Let me, that, that's my homegirl Lola. So when I had my apartment in Buckhead, gangsta boo. I, I call her Lola. I, I ain't never called her Gangsta Boo. But her and her homegirl used to come to my crib like damn near every Friday because, you know, my shit was the party house. And so everybody knew you come to my house, it's going to be liquor, it's going to be drugs, it's going to be music, it's going to be chicks. Drugs, men, and weed, y'all. We called the drugs at the time. Yeah, let's, let's go with that. So, um, so, so we used to all be in my crib. Whip. And Lola used to be in my crib. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you people. That's not why I'm here. Right. But, um... And we used to have so much fun. She was like, so, me and her was so cool. I spoke to her maybe two weeks before she passed. Mm. Like, Lola, that's my people. Rest in peace, Lola. Rest in peace. I love you. Um, I always love you. That's my people right yeah. there. Lola so, be God over God bless. There, God bless. People. Rick James was over there, so you know what's going on. Oh, yeah. Rick, Rick was there. Right. But wait. wait Bobby yeah. Brown came yeah, through three yeah. times. <laughs> Man, we used to have a problem. That's what my crib was. Cat Williams Bobby. was over there. <laughs> Bobby Brown. Bobby no, no, Brown. No, no, no. Bobby, Bobby was there. Oh, Bobby, oh, Bobby was there. Bobby, 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 Bobby was there. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, when you came back in the <laughs> days, you came to Atlanta, you had to fuck with Bobby. Oh, nigga. Right. You had to fuck with Bobby when the nigga was the king. I met... Whitney, the first time at Bobby Brown house. Yeah, wow. really. Yeah, in Atlanta. Yeah. Every time I touch down, Bob yeah. would say, "Call him." Hold up, did you we see this nigga? We just pointed at each other. Hold up, we was in Amsterdam, right? So we did a concert. After the concert, we went to every motherfucking bar in Amsterdam. We stayed out till like five. We almost got in a fight with some some soccer motherfuckers from right. Ireland. Nigga, him and my wife had a dance contest. 
nigga, Bob is my nigga. We're with Bob. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's my that's so my dude Bob right there. Crib. So the first time I'm there, him and Whitney had beef. So Whitney's calling up his brother Tommy, picking <laughs> the phone up on the speakerphone. Wait, uh, Bobby, could you please tell uh, uh, Tommy, tell Bobby to pick up the phone, please. I just want to say I'm sorry and whatever. I'm like, oh shit, that's Whitney Houston. This nigga leading the phone. Fuck you, bitch. You're the only bitch that got money, bitch. I'm the king of all day. Bob, hang up on me. And that's my nigga right yeah, there. Damn. That is my nigga right there. Right back. Bobby, come on, Bobby. I'm like, bitch, what the fuck I tell you? You ain't shit. You think you cause Clive Davis got your back and all that shit? <laughs> bitch, you know how many records Yo, I sold? That is Wham. him. That's him all day. Up on. That's him Next all day. Next time I'm down there, I'm in a fucking crib. Basement huge as hell. We chilling, talking shit. He said, nigga, Whitney here. You want to meet Whitney? I'm like, oh, fucking shit. She made it. I never met right. Whitney. <laughs> this is the best. Wakanda. Bitch ever. Like, yeah, yeah like, yeah. I'm about to meet a goddess. Yeah. Right. The nigga hit the undercar. Wait, wait, pick it up. Hey, babe. So yeah, wait, come down here. I want to meet. You. I want you to meet somebody. My man Ed Lover's here. She said, Ed Lover from your TV rap. Wow. We go, yeah. She said, oh my God, I love Ed. Okay, hold on. He said, Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Will you come down? Bring some beers. Ed, you want beer? I'm like, Yeah, damn right. Bring, bring, bring some beer. She said, All right. So I'm sitting down there. I hear her come down the stairs. This nigga's basement was huge as hell. Uh-huh. But then I see her come across, and this one I fell in love with. This rest in peace, wet. Yes, sir. For real. Yes, sir. She that's, got the three fam. Heinekens in her hand. She stopped. And she goes, oh, damn. And Bob goes, what's the matter? She goes, shit, I forgot the bottle oh, opener. And she and popped yeah, yeah, it. Oh, pop yeah. I already know. Nigga. I said, I, I love know. this. I already know that's what I knew. Whatever I know image it. they put up for her, what? she was that girl from yes, North. Yes, sir. Just met. I already she knew that. She was that girl from North. Right. I fell in love with her. We played spades. We yeah. laughed. We talked oh. shit. She was talking Super yeah, shit. She, yeah. About yeah. everybody. She These was the shit. Think they can fuck with me, eh? Ain't no bitch in R&B and music that can fucking touch me when I touch that fucking microphone. <laughs> yeah, she was real. And she my nigga, and, and, and my lying. nigga is the king and of she R&B. Went lying. And that's what she said. And my nigga is the king of R&B. I'm like, this is fucking. And she went lying. That's amazing. And was always the same. Whenever she saw me, and Bob is still the same nigga. Yeah. If he walked in here right now, he's the same. He ain't on. He never been on no bullshit. Nah, well, never. I, I knew Michael, her brother. Actually, if Bob so come in here, you already know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Dude, look, look, this nigga just shaking his head. He Bob, Bob come in, and see yeah, me is over. Yeah, Bob cool. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, Them two over. niggas together. It's really, yeah, that's my nigga. Right first there. of all, if Bobby come in here and see Case, <laughs> and then see me, we'll probably it's end up over. in a strip club. We never go home. About, yeah, no, 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 no. We never go home. We never go home. How about that? Not going home. No, no, you gotta go home. Wait, what's the god? You gotta go home. I'm going home, but y'all. I have to go home at some point too, but I can always blame it on Case. We all. Me but let me tell you, get this shit. My wife will understand because she hung out with us. Yeah, my she wife had had a, she, no, Bob is, uh, My so wife and Bobby had a dance contest a lot for a lot in the of club in Amsterdam. Me and Bobby had a dance contest on your own TV raps. They couldn't get him. I you got lost. Him. You lost. Yeah, I did lose. Yeah. <laughs> Talk, celebrated 50 years of hip hop, man. The Kickback Podcast years? every single 50. 50, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, you didn't enunciate, brother. Happy 50th birthday to hip hop. Thank you. Ed Lover and the Bitter, we appreciate you. Thank you, you man. to everybody that made the conference. I love you, Ed. I love y'all too. Yes, Kickback sir, Podcast. That's nigga. it. Every Wednesday night, we're here, man. Take it light.